<laughs> it is literally in the on position. And broken. I watched you change the batteries ten minutes ago. Yeah, and it turned on. <sighs> I don't know what I don't know what to tell you, Rob. <laughs> well, well, they figured that out. I oh. turned it off and on again, and now it's now it's good. Now it's Did you blow on it? Mm -hmm. You have to blow on it yeah. to fix these things. So I'm kind of a technical genius, so mm. just immediately mm. solved that problem. Hey, yeah. Are you streaming again? Uh, How's your computer soon. doing? How's your computer soon. doing? You fixed that yet? <laughs> yeah, but I haven't tried to, so you can't hold that against me. Touche. <laughs> That's a good point. It hasn't tried yet, so it can't be can't be your fault. Yeah, fun. okay. <laughs> yeah, that adds up to me. Bulletproof. <laughs> Were you doing an intro for uh, Versus Live? Uh, something like that. I it's, give either, it a... it's either Versus Live or a new Subway sandwich commercial. Okay, okay, okay. So we have a, a great new cold cut combo. <laughs> yeah, they went Tom Brady into Steph Curry into Ross Merriam for their three people that they yeah, wanted that for Subway. Continuing improvement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Merriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. We've got Rob in the booth. Say, hey, what's up, Rob? What's up, Rob? Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, which I'm sure you have many of, yes. and burns, which you probably also have many of, mm. in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. Today, we are celebrating Yuta Takahashi's incredible run at the World Championships last weekend. Yeah. 10 matches, or was it 10 or 11 matches in a row? 11. 11, 11 matches in a row. Yeah. Starting 03 in the limited portion, never losing and constructed. Yeah. And it really, it was, I don't know if we've ever <laughs> seen a run like that before. I guess like LSV's run in San Diego, but that ended in the top four. Like, yeah. We've never seen a run like that where they go under, like, back against the wall, probably couldn't lose again, mm -hmm. right? I, I think it, at any point in this, in the rest of the Swiss, if he takes another loss, his tiebreakers are so bad, he's probably sure. not making it in. For sure. He's, uh, yeah. uh, you know, they d ended up having five people in that X4 bracket. One yep. had to get cut before the tiebreaker round. Ended up it being, was Ely. Or being Ely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, it, you know, Utah likely would have been in that position for had sure. he taken a another loss. You know, maybe things shake out where there's only four, he gets a chance in. But, uh, you know, very, very much back against the wall, and rattles off 11 matches in a row against the yep. toughest field in the world. Yep. And yeah, I've never connected with a player more than Utah because, well, I'm not great at limited two, so I've pl had plenty of 1-2 drafts or 0-3 oh, drafts, but haven't quite had the 11 O's to get there. So yeah, that was incredibly impressive. And his draft deck was actually like pretty good too. It was at least, you know, serviceable. So, you know, limited's hard. The games don't always go your way, but to be able to still stick with it, and and rattle off every win with a deck that nobody else is playing. You know, I mean, other oh, people yeah. played Is It, but just to be playing Is It Dragons, be the only one, and just say, well, I think all y'all screwed up by not just playing these creatures. Oh, well, he was right. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So yeah, uh, he, knew, sweet. he knew something the rest of us didn't, and it yeah. paid off for him, which we always like to see. So uh, today's episode mm -hmm. is going to be all about Yuta Takashi's magic career, which really starts with... Demir fairies. It really does. The, yep. the fairies master uh, <coughs> you know, won a Grand Prix in 2008 with the deck yep. when it was at its zenith. Continued to play it in other formats, extended, modern. When well, it was not yeah. good. Well after anyone else, <laughs> yeah. uh, everyone else stopped playing it. We'll just find ways to win with it. Uh, yeah. And so we're going to play a lot of fairies today. We're going to be starting with that, you know, uh, prototypical list that we remember from the days of standard. Uh, back in the late 2000s, it was Grand Prix Shizuoka that uh, Yuta won. Mm -hmm. So Corey's going to be playing his winning deck list from that tournament. Yes. I'm going to be playing yes. another iconic mm. deck from that era and standard, and that is Golgari Elves, yep. which did win that Pro Tour in the hands of Charles Gindy, Pro Tour Hollywood. Pro Tour Hollywood was my first Pro Tour as well, and I played pretty similar list to Fairies too. So, oh man, I was just looking over this deck, and it just it brings back the feels. Yeah. I, I ended up losing the last round to not top 50 to Q again for the next Pro Tour uh, in a good matchup, too. Like, up against Revel Arc, you remember that? Like, just Fairies had a good Revel Arc matchup. It was like a blue-white control deck. They were just slower than you, but, yeah, didn't get it done. Yeah, I love that Revel Arc deck. But, yeah. yeah. It was not good against Fairies. Agreed, yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to be playing a uh, Golgari Elf deck from that same Grand Prix. This is uh, somebody who made the top four of that tournament. Okay. Though, they were on the opposite side of the bracket from uh, Takahashi. They actually lost in the semis, still to Fairies, but in the hands of Olivier Ruel, and then okay. you could beat Olivier in, in the finals of that tournament. So we're going to see what would have happened if that person would have made it to the finals to yeah. play against Utah. Yeah. 
and you know because I'm playing the elf side, I'm probably going to win. And yeah, of course, of course. You know, but you're you kind of have more pressure on you on this show. Like you got to uphold the Utah side of things. You're the hero for Ugh. the first time in your entire life. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. I have to try to play even half as good as Utah. I'm I'm screwed. Eh, well, let's say let's say a quarter. Okay. We don't, we don't want to put the bar too high. I can do a quarter. You can absolutely. Quarter, yeah. I can do a quarter. Okay. Yeah. And you get to be on the play because Marvel's over here. You beat Brad, huh? Mm, something like that. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> All right. Let's battle. It's good to be back. Good to be back. So I'm gonna be going first. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> Is it <laughs> land thoughtsies? Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> If there is any other keepable hand, I yeah, it's not that good, but it's keepable. And mine absolutely is not. No green man. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, I got to refresh myself with some of these cards. I don't have the Stone Cold Blade, though. I don't have the recall into Bitter Blossom, but... <laughs> right there, right there. If, if you were not around for this, so the, the games where they have Bitter Blossom are quite different than the games where they don't. Yes, and now, honestly, Bitter Blossom in Modern is not good. You know, like, it's popping up in some of these, like, black-white Grief Ephemerate decks or something right away as just another threat that you can pitch to Grief or whatever. And it's just like, oh, yeah. Bitter Blossom's not playable in, the, in Modern at all anymore. I think it is a reasonable uh, sideboard threat against control decks. Yeah, against something where no matter what, they're not pressuring you lo your life at all, and it's a constant stream of creatures, but yeah. Even then, now with Prismatic ending, that's probably not even true anymore. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> if I just go Bitter Blossom on the play, even Thought Season to Bitter Blossom, and you just have an another prismatic ending you just end it right away yeah no it's not great yeah or even to fairy just to fairy bounce if the control deck's on the play it's always been a thing with bitter blossom decks though hasn't it like the games really have bitter blossom are always so different from yeah it's just like, such a genius yeah, card yeah you gotta earn them when you don't have them that's for sure i remember when that card got previewed uh and i wasn't playing a ton of magic i was in college and mm -hmm. somebody messaged me like yeah you got to check out this card that just got previewed from the new set yeah and i go and i look at it, i read it, i was like that card is messed up. Yeah. You know, there's not a, a, that many cards that I read and I immediately think that card is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Unequivocally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Unfortunately, this hand is also messed up because it has no lands. <laughs> wow. You are messing up over there. <laughs> hey, I know, uh, you know, Yuta won a lot, so we want to showcase Yuta's decks, and but you don't have to just, you know, throw the games here, you know? Yeah. You can at least keep six, you know? No. No. Okay. Okay. Can't got it. That. All right, Rob, you got any early questions to start the morning off? Uh, so far, both you know, questions the I have right? are... Uh, <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> ...are on your favorite subject about vans. Oh, yes! I love vans. What yeah, kind of vans okay. are we talking about? Uh, yeah. Like a Ford Astro... Is it Ford maybe Astro? Okay. I don't know. A van maybe down by know. the river? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought you were talking about bands. Oh, we're talking about bands. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I like, like, you know, <laughs> Foo Fighters are pretty good. John Mayer. Yeah, right. John Mayer, absolutely, yeah. Whew. Heartthrob. Okay, <laughs> you, got, you, you got an actual magic question? Yeah, it was just like after Worlds, like I, I guess to make it a broader question, like how do you feel about the meta post Worlds? Um, and do you think that like anything might need to happen to the format? Um, I think it's too certain to tell for now. I know you wrote an article. I, I can't remember what side you were on. I'm on the ban epiphany side. You are on the ban. Okay, well then, nice. We'll get a good uh, contrast here because I'm on the side of wait until after the envy. Like, I think Wizards should take a look and be like, this is one tournament. We should have one bigger tournament. Plus, if there was going to be bans, it should have happened Monday to give us all time to, to, to play things. And they have to keep an eye on the Invitational. Like, they know what kind of tournaments are coming out. It's the biggest standard paper tournament that we've had post-COVID. You know, so that had to have been taken into account. They're going to get a lot of data when it comes to that event. World is a small field, so it, things are a lot different there. Um, and you see even Mono Green on the SCG Tour is like doing great. Like it had the highest win percentage over the weekend. And maybe that's a product of the world's competitors being better, knowing how to play an All Runs Epiphany deck a little bit stronger. And that's why it did so well. So with all those reasons combined, I think we wait until after the Invitational. If the Invitational screams All Runs too good, then I could get behind getting rid of only that. That's the only consideration. All Runs Epiphany is disgusting. Yeah, but. Then we get past the Invitational and everyone's like, oh, but the new set is closed. Why don't we just wait until that? Then yeah. it's okay. We got it. We need a few weeks to figure out the new set. Then there's going to be another big tournament coming up. Yeah. There's always there's always sort of a line. I'm, I'm, yeah. I am somewhat amenable to waiting, <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure that the problem is just Epiphany. Yeah. I think there's very clear 
metagame reasons why Epiphany is obviously the card that is forcing the metagame into this narrow Epiphany decks versus aggro decks kind of uh, dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Dual decks, really, you know, if you will. <laughs> yeah. We're turned into a Azika's Chariot, all runs dual deck, yeah. or commander battle. But in particular, it's specific kinds of, of Azika's Chariot decks. It's, it's the most aggressive form of it. Yeah. And then mono white, you know, it's monocolored aggressive decks. And so the there is, and we, if you remember week one and week two of, of this environment, we had those Blood on the Snow decks, we had Storm the Festival decks, and things like that, uh, that you know, really showcased a much wider range of what was possible. Yeah. Bant Festival, Mono Black, um, even mid-rangey Gruul yeah. Chariot decks, kind of off the table. But we did have Depra's Teamer deck, made it to the finals, you know, I mean, that's kind of a slower one that just plays counter spells for all runs, so. Yeah, it is a little bit slower. I think the, you know, the main lesson I learned was that everybody, you know, got rid of their Goldspan Dragons because there were so many Ren and Sevens around. Yeah. But then All Runs of Epiphany forced out Ren and Seven, and nobody reacted and realized, okay, it's time to play Goldspan Dragon again. Yeah. And the two people that did, did really well. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, the two people that played in the main made it in the finals. That's... Yeah. And, and who knows? Goldspan... Or who would have guessed Goldspan? Still a good card. Yeah. Yeah. It was being very suppressed by Ren and Seven, and Ren got a lot worse once Epiphany started yep. entering the metagame in high numbers. Yeah, so. Paulo even said when I interviewed him this last weekend, he even said, I was like, wow, only two Ren and Sevens in your deck. That's kind of wild. And he's like, yeah, plain and simple. The card's just not good right now. Like, he, he didn't really elaborate at all. He's just like, the card is not good. You know, yeah. Paulo's saying the card's not good. Uh, that's probably pretty true. But anyways, um, so I'm on the board of waiting. To, yeah. And then once it goes after the Envy, I am going to be like, like, Crimson Vow comes out in like 10 days. Like, give it a shot, you know? But we'll see. Okay. Uh, well, I'm on five cards here. I think I'm going to put these back and try to give myself a little bit more gas. A little and bit more I'm gas? Short on it with the... Oh, yeah, you get to go first. I'll show there. these three cards. And I'll go like that and pass to you. It's pretty good. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Just wait till I find my Rift Sweeper. My hand does need some help, though, I will tell you. I will show you a Llanowar Elves with my Guilt Leaf Palace. Oh, my God. Llanowar Elves was a thing? Wow, I forgot. Yeah. God, how broken. And you know if I'm playing Llanowar Elves, I have a turn one every game. Yeah, that's really true. That's really true. That's how um, you know I'm an experienced Elves pilot. I believe it. I believe it. All right, well, I am going to be a buzzkill and kill the Llanowar Elf. Pass to you. That seems weird to give yourself a name while casting nameless inversion. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I just have Mutavault go. All right, Mutavault, Lana, or else? That really... You know, we, we picked these decks beforehand, a little behind the curtains here from Versus Live. So we were picking the decks, and it started all with the decks we wanted for Utah. You know, and so we picked this deck, and I was like, okay, Ross, just pick a deck. You know, I, I got some stuff I got to do. Pick something you'd like to play against this deck. Shocking! You play the Mutavault Llanowar Elf deck. I am I'm blown away by this. <laughs> okay, I did pick it. I'm gonna play a land. I'm gonna pass. A hold. Upkeep. I'm going to Pestermite, and I could just Pestermite this, but then you animate this and attack, and I yeah I would block. So yeah, <laughs> I'll tap that. You want to animate? Treetop Village. Ooh, baby. Yo. Okay. Down to one. Ooh. I'm getting very punished. I will play a Fairy Conclave and the Beatdowns. Pestermite. 18. Uh, do I have the Kiki combo in here? Or mm. Is there twin? Am I splashing? You might. I don't know. You just played this yep. card? This is one card I didn't play at that Pro Tour for, for whatever it's worth. Maybe I was it wrong. Was but. A it's a three mana two on time walk. Did you not see what it just did? <laughs> we were just talking about banning extra turns, and I just have a three mana one in here. Yeah. Wow. How oh, cheating. Um. Well, I'm very behind. Yeah, you're in trouble. I kept a two lander on the play, and I've drawn lands, and that's really all my hand needed. So I think I have to take some risks. So I think. Oh God, I'm just gonna get blown out, aren't I? <laughs> For what? Just blown apart. <laughs> oh my god, it works out perfectly for you too. Oh god, what is it? Uh, I mean, are you talking about you're going to get blown out by this card? Because that does work yeah. out perfect for next turn. Um, so the the safe play is just to play my creature and, you know, try to do what I can. 
but I just don't think that's working against the battlefield that exists. I think I just have to hope that Corey doesn't have it. So I will cast a Garrick Wildspeaker. Oh, that resolves. Okay. I will plus to untap a couple lands. Let's make it Guilty Palace and the Old Muta Vault. Okay. And then I will evoke a Shriek Maw. Evoke a Shriek Maw? That's pretty good. Okay. Do you have the Scion? No. Oh, <laughs> God, he doesn't have the Scion. <laughs> I do not have the Scion. Um. Okay. Yeah, Scion would have just countered that, lived you with four power exactly, killed by Garrick, and I'm just... Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. No, I had Spell Stutter Sprite as my <laughs> defense. I think I'm still going to play it. Um, pester that a little bit. It's negative one to get a creature, right? Yeah, to get a 3-3 three, three beast. Okay. No so abilities. I will cast <laughs> Ancestral Visions. Target? A me. Oh. A one. I tried, chat. A two. I tried. A three. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then draw. Oh my god, that was not good. All right, well, we're back to, you back to, you are back to in the game, because that was not good. Um, okay, so I'm just going to attack here, play Fairy Conclave and pass. Okay. Stop keep. Oh. I have nothing. Go ahead. No miss spine click. That's good. <laughs> Um, I would like to play a Civic Wayfinder. Hmm, Civic Wayfinder, huh? Corey could potentially, if he has another spell stutter here, could animate Fairy Conclave, cast it, counter the Wayfinder. That I could. That I These do become fairies, could. right? They Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that I think that was an errata. I don't think the original versions of them did that. Really? Yeah, but I think they wanted them to work with Lorwyn, so they gave them all creature types. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I don't remember. So you have two cards besides that, huh? Two. Yep. Okay. I counted them. You counted them all by yourself? Yep. We got so many creature lands over there that kind of scares me, and my hand is not great, yeah. but. I think I just want to stop your land. I have a cryptic, so I'm contemplating counter bounce Garrick before you can use it, which is nice, but I kind of want the card. Um, so I'm just going to counter draw. Okay. Uh, then I have a land of elves. Okay. I will untap the two Muta Vaults, use one to animate the other, and get in for two. Okay, I'm at 18. So you got 18 all. Yep. Pass the turn. Um, so I'll untap, I'll draw, I'll play a, uh, I'm going to animate Fairy Conclave, play River, animate Fairy Conclave, send these at Garrick, and I'll pass to you. Hmm. Mm, yes. Awkward. Yeah, this game would have been easier if my turn two play was Bitter Blossom instead of Nameless Inversion, I think. I agree. <laughs> Still don't think it's going to be that hard. Yeah, well, you haven't seen my hand. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, do I just cast my thing or do I deal Corey five damage? Ooh. Five, you say? Yeah, I can animate tree top and immutable. Yeah, I'm aware. That's a lot of damage. It's more than four. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can do better later. So I will do that. All right, I'm at thirteen. Pass the turn. Okay. Oh, draw. Ooh. Well. Was better late than never. Never. I'll play Secluded Glen, revealing Bitter Blossom. I'll play it. I'm at a slightly risky-ish life total, but not completely risky. And then I'll pass to you. You have three in hand. Yep. Or er, four. Four. Okay. I will play Renzron Vanquisher, showing you Civic Wayfinder. Showing me Civic Wayfinder. Okay. Yep. That resolves. Yeah. 
Then I'll play Civic Wayfinder. Right, I'll spell starter sprite that. Okay, I'll pass the turn. Okay. Yeah. I will take a damage. Create a fairy. You're 12. I could have played Vanquisher last turn, but I figured I would draw an elf at some point and just double spell with it, and I did. And you did. Um, so, let's go like this. I have a Sower of Temptations. Wanted you to resolve that to be able to take that. So now, if you have a removal for Sower, I don't know what that deck played. I guess Shriek Maw is face up. So, that or Nameless, kill that. Then you could animate Treetop. Um, or Mutavolt, so it's just the question of, do I want to attack with a Conclave or not, or do I want to just hold up? Um, so these are assuredly getting in there, and I think it's safer for me to just attack with them. Yeah, I got a 16. Okay, pass to you. Do, 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 do. Um... Look at this good, honest, clean magic here. Back in 2008, you just played elf decks, you played fairy decks. Played some tribal stuff. Okay, so nothing I can do about another, another spell starter here. Yeah. So the question is, do I want to attack with Mutavault this turn or get back Civic Wayfinder? Getting back Wayfinder is probably better. So I will Profane Command for three, taking a point of damage. Uh, choosing the modes of minus three, minus three to Sower and returning Wayfinder. Does it return to Battlefield or? Battlefield, yeah. Okay. Yep, uh, that happens. And then I'll You take one to do it, though, right? Yeah, so I'm at 15. 15. Okay. Um, then let's get... Uh, do I want to get a Swamp so that I don't have to take a damage to cast another Profane Command? Or do I want to get a Forest so that I can... Potentially cast a double green spell and animate treetop in the same turn. Swamp seems like a better bet. Okay. Uh, and then I will, yeah, attack with the Lenore Elves. All right. I uh, will block. Yep. Pass the turn. All right. I'll go to 11 now. Ooh, right on time. Visions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Now I got to... Think how much I can attack with, what I have to be defensive with, since my hand is not great. Um, so you can go animate treetop and one of the mutavolt. So you can bring in with four attackers. Yeah, I'm just gonna say go. Defense. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Okay. Draw. Yep. Lay the swamp. Okay. And question for me is now how do I want to attack? Now how do you want to attack? You have potentially seven power on the battlefield with the two conclaves. Yep. I'll just put this right here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will... Animate two mutavolts. Okay. Then I would like to go to declare an attack. Yeah, go ahead. Send with two mutavolts, Vanquisher, and Wayfinder. Okay. Um. So I'm going to animate both of my conclaves. Yep. Then I'm going to... Probably, probably go like this, take two, uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you got a nine. Yep. My goal with this attack was to really tr trade down a bunch of stuff, and that that makes the trample on treetop village very valuable. Yeah. I, I want you to be chump blocking that later, so I, I attacked with everything else. Yeah, makes I've sense. I've got no play. All right. You got an eight. Tap. Down to eight. I need a good draw. Ooh. I'm hoping for no cryptic commands or misspine clicks. Yeah. The dreaded four drops. I have a land, and I will pass to you. Draw. Yep. Uh, animate Mutavolt. Yep. 
And anime treetop. Uh, yep. Declare an attack. Sure. Send them both. I'll block here and play us on. I wish I had that last turn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you take three, you go to five. Five, yep. Hey, pass the turn. All right, I can't take any more damage, basically. Go to four. I'll have to find a misbind at some point, but hopefully the recall gets it for me. Yeah, misbind click can champion Bitter Blossom, which was a key. Yep. All right, aiming. I'm going to attack for one. That's not good. It means you do something. I'll play a sower. Pass to you. <laughs> You're 14. Yep. All right, it's a race. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hit your land pile now? <laughs> um, because I had ten of them. <laughs> um, was shroud what it always was, or was is it changed to something else now? Like no. was it, that was always shroud? Yeah. Or maybe it didn't have Shroud before this, and it was just said can't be targeted by... Oh, yeah, might not have had the key. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, do I want to trade off the Treetop Village? I think I do. Yeah, it makes so sense. I think I just want to take the heat off of me. I'm thinking it, if it's The all, heat is on. If, if these trade, and it's all bricks the rest of the game, you go to three, attack me to 11, then you go to two, attack me to six, and you go to one and kill me. <laughs> all right. So I'd really just need, like, one more thing. And I just need one more thing, and I'm going to yeah. get three things. It's um, going to be a photo finish. Yeah, so you're gonna, the Ancestral's going to go off when you're at two? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll animate and offer the trade. Double block. Mm, I'll kill a sower. Okay, just in case you have removal, then it yeah. still trades with everything. Yep, pass the turn. All right, I go down to three. Oh, I, love, I forgot the tension of some of these Bitter Blossom games. <laughs> nice. I'm sure that'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Profane Command. <laughs> Three. I'm at 11. <laughs> Go. Ah, don't do it to me. Come on, Profane Command. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure there's a mode that just kills me in a here. Target player loses X life. <laughs> wow. Well, this would have been my hand after that. I think I could have pulled it off. <laughs> God, you're a jerk. What a jerk. <laughs> You multi five that game too, didn't I you? Did. <laughs> <laughs> multi five on the draw. Wow, impressive work. And I had recall to start. Yeah, it's just my recall and my draw step. When I was st hitting lands, was four lands. I'm like, uh oh, like I'm in trouble <laughs> if I don't get anything. You, you flooded a bit to let me back in the game. The yeah. game got close. You were ahead at the end, and I top decked to steal it. Yeah, and uh, and it was nice when you attacked that turn, kind of all out, because if. If you wouldn't have attacked, maybe not as full on. Basically, if yeah. you drew anything, the, then Scion I drew Scion. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I lost so much power in that exchange because I had to. I mean, I, I yeah, was, I was out of healthy. Life with the bitter blossom, yeah, out, and you yep. just have so many good draws. I miss my click at any point, and I'm just dead. Oh yeah. Should we just do for this show two pre and then post or? Yeah, let's do two pre. Okay. We're, yeah. You know, it's it's been too long. I don't remember how to sideboard. Exactly. I don't even know what half of the cards I, on my sideboard. I know do. I'm gonna bring in all my cards that deal with flyers. <laughs> I suppose these are good, huh? Yeah. Give you the old death mark. Wow. Oh, magic has changed. <laughs> <laughs> magic has changed. Was, it, was there a red deck in that format? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Re I remember fairies, elves, revelark. I mean, to be fair, bottle gnomes there would have won me the game. So yeah. <laughs> I remember people trying to play Oversoul of Dusk and it not being good. Yeah, like everybody yeah. thought it would be good against fairies, and it just wasn't because yeah. it's a five mana creature. Yeah, and <laughs> but I don't remember a super low to the ground aggressive deck. I got. Uh, like, I don't either. There was a there was a Merfolk deck that was okay. Like a tier two Marfo. Oh wait, there was a red deck. Okay, there was like I remember playing. It was like a demigod of something deck. Oh yeah, because I remember playing that at the Pro Tour, and I had a really close matchup against it. Like that Pro Tour just stuck with me. Your first one always sticks with you, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the red matchup being very close to actually bad. Like demi demigod, like came back if you. I don't know if it was like a third mm. third demigod of, of the revenge. week or something. It was, it was yeah. five Rakdos mana for a five four flyer, and then yeah. when you cast it, you returned all copies of it from your graveyard to the battlefield. And so it was awkward with Cryptic Command. You always had to make sure that even as the Cryptic Command player, you had to make sure, yeah. like you know, let the trigger resolve, then tap your yeah. Like, tap your I was just gonna say it. back in then my day, it. back in my day when you could still screw up in Magic, and it's actually 
happened is I think at that pro tour, I was like, they're like demigod. And I was like, yeah, I'll spell stutter sprite. And they're like, okay, trigger resolve. And I'm like, no. Yep. And now in this day, they'd be like, okay, of course he meant this. It does the trigger resolves first back up, you know, uh, you both get a slap on the hand. But back in my day, if you didn't say that right, or you didn't call the right card with pithing needle, you just lost the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, the game was over. The game was done. Yeah. I remember there, were, there was a uh, demigod deck. Yep. All right. Let's battle again. I didn't like what you did there. Profane Command, I forgot, was a messed up magic card. It was particularly messed up and limited. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, duh. I had that card in my pre-release deck. Oh, it no. was uh, not okay. Yeah. Oh, my hand started off so good, but I don't think I can risk this. Uh, I will be sneeping this hand. God, I don't think I can risk this one. Uh, so close, so close, so close. Dang it. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't have been that great, because I would have been turn three. I guess I spell stutter sprite one of your one drops that you're going to play on turn two. I'm sure you're going to be playing three drops on turn two. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. <laughs> you do that. And then Bitter Blossom? Yeah, I'm already dead. All right, try this again. Oh, uh, five, six, seven. Okay, well, this is not amazing, but I will keep. We should play with mulligan rules like back in the day. <laughs> I don't even remember what they were. It was just it, it was pretty straw six, right? Yeah, it was just yeah. straw six. Okay, I will take a damage. It was, the, it was the old Paris mulligan. Okay. Here in 19, I like turn one Underground River. That tells me Corey's land light. It gives me Corey's land light. Uh, I once again have the <laughs> Palace land where else. <laughs> okay. And you, you feeling know. okay there, Corey? Yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm just happy to be back at the <laughs> show, you know? So I'm going to take a pain. <laughs> <laughs> 18. I'll play me to Bob Pass to you. Um, hmm. There's a bit of awkward sequencing here. I think I might take another week off after this, Rob. You know, it, it was it was so peaceful. You know, it's it's good to take time for yourself after that beating you just got last game. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. It's like every Tuesday and Thursday of last week, I just like woke up and I just just smelled the roses. You know, I had a cup of coffee, I chilled outside. And I'm like, God, usually my day is more stressful. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I will uh, play a Civic Wayfinder. All right. I just want to use my mana efficiently here. I'm going to get a forest. Okay. You can go. End step. Animate. A three, a two, a draw. I'll play this. I reveal Pestermite. And uh, I'm gonna say go, but I think I'm gonna tab you down just because I don't want to see a Garrick. So I'll tap that lawnmower down during your upkeep. That's fine. Okay, okay. I needed the fairy to play this land untapped, so you weren't right the whole time. <laughs> Back to two. All right, I'll block. God, it, wait, can we rewind? Yeah. Yeah, put that back in here. Look at, look at, look at what we're doing. Like, blocking. <laughs> you used, remember when you used to be able to block in magic? Huh. It's crazy. Fun times. Time to be alive, yeah. Uh, I've got a treetop village and a Bramblewood Paragon. I don't even know what that does. Where creature control comes to play it. Okay, that seems like a good creature for back in the day. Yeah, good against uh, blocking fairy tokens. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Okay, I'll pass to you. Needed that land, but that's okay. I'll live. Um... I will attack for two. Pastor Mike. That resolves. I will tap this. And I'll block. Okay. Then I will play this forest you know about. Is it Garrick play time? A Garrick. Okay. And I'm a little bit worried about losing my. 3-3 uh, three, three to a creature and then Mutavolt killing this, but you definitely... Oh, well, you're going to draw cards. You're going to have another land. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't remember exactly what removal you had. I would assume just Nameless Inversion because that's what everyone had. I Nameless Inversion to your last game, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. also got Pepper Smoke, Death, Death Mark. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, 
Here, what's the one mana bounce spell in standard right now? That card's actually in here too. I'm just gonna plus. If there wasn't an ancestral ready to go off next turn, I think I would make the three three. Done. Yeah, but as is. All right. I'm gonna be drawing four cards a turn. Maybe I can unmulligan essentially. Yeah. That's why you saw Corey be so aggressive in trading resources. Yep. He knows he's got this backup. Um. But my card advantage comes from the fact that I have so many creature lands. We also got a Planeswalker out right now. I'm going to play River of Tears, and I'll pass to you. Okay, I will play a Pendlehaven. Okay. I will animate Treetop Village. Sure. I will declare an attack. Sure. Send uh, with... Hmm. I'm a little worried about sending with the Land War Elves, even though I have Pendlehaven and Trump Mutaval, because Cory could have Scion. Because mm -hmm. Mutaval can tap for mana even after it's animated. So, yeah, I'm just going to get in with three top. You play just want this turn, right? Uh, uh, I have not played a land yet. Are you sure? No, you played Pendlehaven. Oh, yeah, I just played Pendlehaven. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay, I will, a spell, though. I'll take three. Still within inside of combat, I'll bounce draw. Take a pain. So you're at 14? Yep. Uh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Pass <the> turn. <laughs> Rico. Yeah. There's some nuances uh. to playing a scripted command that... Uh, we forgot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it seems to play in Modern recently, but Modern doesn't have nearly as many <laughs> giant permanents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what the hell am I going to do now? I got magic cards. Um, okay, I am going to... Secluded Glen, revealing Bitter Blossom. Four, five, six, seven. Um, awkward, because I'd have to discard here if I... I, I Because I kind of want to just... I don't want to play it this turn, essentially. Because uh, I want to have all my mana. But am I okay just discarding one of these lands? Or I could play this first, targeting my own thing. I don't remember what kind of removal you played. I think it was just Shriek Mob Profane Command. I don't think you played Nameless Inversion. Um, all right. I think having my land is valuable. So I am going to play a... Pretend I did this before I played my land, so River of Tears didn't get me. I'm going to play Pestermite and target on top. Um... Trigger on the stack, all nameless inversion, the pastor might. Okay. Then I will pass to you. Just didn't want to discard. Maybe that was silly, though, because that was not the exchange I wanted to happen. I didn't want you to use your mana on your turn, or on my turn, but whatever. Um... Hmm. So you have a billion cards in hand now? Seven. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot. I didn't want to discard. I've uh, unmulliganed, if you will. I will cast a Garrick. Okay. I will untap Treetop Village and Guiltleaf Palace. Okay. Two mana planeswalkers. Busted. I will yeah, play a forest. Okay. Animate Treetop Village. Sure. And attack. Okay. You go to 11. 11. Pass the turn. It's on. Yep. That was the play I wanted to make, but not as good. Um... So, I can animate Mutavault and attack Pressure Garrick, since Mutavault is a 3-3. Three, three. 
Mm. I kind of like that to start it off. Um. <clears throat> Just thinking here, if I do that. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to play a land and attack these two at Garrick. Yeah, I will chump the Mute Vault. Okay. I think Garrick is more valuable. I think I'm going to, before damage, play another Scion, give it one less, make sure those Scions are not going to be killed ever, um, and then suspend this and pass to you. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, double scion was like was just the nuts. It like didn't happen often because removal was so good. Like fairies decks ended up playing pepper smoke, so I think even scions got taken out in the mirror. I think or just the black decks had like pepper smokes in the board and then just had very cheap removal at this time. So now I'm gonna expect Ross to kind of hammer home some damage here. Let's get in with three top. I'm at eight. Let's see you to eight. Play an Imperious Perfect. Okay. Play another Treetop Village. Okay. And then make a Beast. Okay. I'll pass the turn. All right. That's a lot of aggression. Real problem here is that 4-4 four, four Mutavolt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a, mo a mono 3-3s. Three mm -hmm. All right. I am going to... I have a uh, sower, probably pretty good. <laughs> uh, I think we'll take this, and I'll play River of Tears. I'll kill Garrick. You can double animate Treetop, um, but I have the four four Mutable plus a four four sower. And I can jump there. Yeah, we'll be safe for one turn. Just attack there. And I'll pass to you. Okay. <laughs> Seven. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm still scared of some cards. That's for sure. These things had trample or something, right? Uh, no. Mm, okay. Garrick beasts do not have trample. Um, I'm going to cast a Shriek Maw. To kill your own Imperious Perfect, huh? Yep. Okay, that's dead. <laughs> And I'll get a Guilt Leaf Palace. Okay. And I'll pass the turn. I'll play a Scion of Una. So what is this? 3, 6, 9, <laughs> 14? Yeah, it's oh. a lot. And then the Mute of all is 5, so it's one short of lethal. Yeah, um, so... Yeah, 9. Um, Mute of all can block Trigma, right? Mm. Fear, right? Mm. No. Black or Artifact. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Colorless is not artifact. Hmm. Okay. Well, I could be in trouble. I think you're winning this race. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what is in your hand. Um. All right. What if I just attacked for nine? I have two blockers you can't really deal with. That takes six. I think that's fine. Oh, did I push this down? I don't know. I don't either. I did not see. I don't think it matters. Yeah, I think it is over this turn, but Twitch chat, you can tell me if we did or not, and we'll trust yeah. you. Um, Getting it for nine? Yeah, sure. I'm at 11. All right, here we go. Todd says you did, so... Okay. Okay. He's a trustworthy gentleman. Once again, 
Is it I need command? A, I need a brain command. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have anything in the tank, so command me to death again. Oh, that's a line of waste. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Best I can do is animate these, attack with three creatures, you block two of them, you go to two. Exactly, yep. And then I'll kill you on the backswing. Yeah, I just I drew a nameless inversion. That oh, God. Didn't do anything. <laughs> My nameless would have been a little better. Yeah, I never had time to cast Bitter Blossom. T two cards away. Yes, yes. Well, um, yeah, I mean, this was that was just the story of rec er, ancest <laughs> Recall. Ancestral Visions, getting it done. You know, just turn one, turn two. My hand, you were very right, did not have any land. I drew the land three, otherwise I was just dead. Yeah. I had two Pestermites, like... And I think I maximized Pestermites and maximized Cryptic Commands against you. Um, with, like, bouncing during combat, or playing it during combat and blocking and stuff. So got some cute interactions there. All right, everyone, that does it for our first two uh, games here with Yuta Takahashi Day, celebrating his win at the World Championship last weekend. We're going to be playing some fairies from multiple generations, as well as his winning deck a little bit later. So that's the stuff to look forward to. But we got game three coming, so we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with sideboarding here on Versus Live. Welcome back to a Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Golgari Elves and Demir Fairies. On my side, pretty obvious, the cards that are coming in here. The, uh, the These are coming that, in, right? Yeah. These are coming out? The cards that deal <laughs> lots of damage to flying creatures uh, tend to be pretty good here. Yeah. So Squall Line and Cloud Thresher. I like the mix because Cloud Thresher can get trumped by the double, or I guess you need triple, um, Scion Draws. Yeah. So that, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you do need three of them, which you did have last game. So yep. we, we at least have outs to things like that. Um, and they Squall both actually, Line doesn't care, though. Yeah. <laughs> they also all bo both deal damage to players. So Squall Line also really helps me uh, win races. Yeah. You know, you're trying to, with Bitter Blossom, you're always trying to manage your life total really closely. It's kind of like playing Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, so Squall Line can help me, you know, m make a mess of your well laid plans where you're trying to manipulate the race so that you live right at one or two or three life. Uh, just getting that extra bit of, of damage. You saw that's how I was able to steal game one with, with Profane Command. Now I've got, you know, four more direct damage sources as well yep. as sweepers. And I'm bringing out just inefficient, expensive sorceries. Ren's Run Packmaster dies too easily to Deathmark to be worth it. It's never going to yep. take over the battlefield. And then Shriek Maw being a sorcery speed removal spell against a deck with Cyan of Una, uh, does not seem great to not me. Not great, so, yeah. Uh, there is something to be said for Shriekma being a, a difficult-to-block creature. Yeah. Um, I mean, it almost got me there. It, I thought for sure if you, ha you had one Profane Command and I was going to be able to race you, but not being able to block it put me at five, so then a Command finished me off. I was like, oh my god, here we go again. Well, command also gives you a creature's fear. Oh, does That's, it? Well, yeah, up to X target creatures. Oh, God. Here. It's, it's return a uh, mana value X or less creature. Give a creature minus X, minus X. Target player loses X life or that's up to right. X target creatures you control gain fear until on the turn. Okay, that's right. That's right. So that was like the OG card that is like what the template for every magic card is now with how many words are on that card. <laughs> Back then, I was like, what? I'm not reading all of this. And now it's like, okay, every single new set, we're like, got to sit down with my bifocals <laughs> and get ready to learn all these cards. <laughs> that is how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the in this case, um, I, I think I'm still going to cut Shriek Ma. It's just too inefficient of a card. It still just dies to Nameless Inversion too easily. Okay. Uh, usually taking an irrelevant piece of material away with it. And you even have an artifact creature that can block it now. Mm. Yep. That's annoying. Absolutely. So now I'm going to be playing it pretty obvious here. Were sideboards just this obvious back in 2008? Be like, this card kills green creatures. I'm going to bring it in mm. against the green deck. Two, like, two years ago, our sideboards were filled with Veil of Summer's Aether Gusts. <laughs> that's true. That's true. This is just Aether Vial, you know, <laughs> yeah. basically against green white decks. And then bringing in two Mastercores, I was just asking Ross, I was like, wow, what does Mastercore come in against? He's like, me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, touche. So we're going to bring <laughs> yeah. that in as well. Look at the removal spells of my deck, Corey. Yeah, I was, and then it got me thinking, nameless inversion, all that jazz, you can't really kill it, so. Okay, seven mana, let's go. Yeah, so we'll see, we'll see if uh, I make Yuta Takahashi proud with how he sideboarded um, with this deck, but who knows. We're taking out Pestermites on the draw, I think that's my weakest card. On the play, I can really get you, right? I can stop Garrick, um, you know, I can maybe block Civic Wayfinder and tap a land down. When it's those exchanges, it's good, but when it's just tap something down and I don't have Splinter Twin to combo with it, not the best. Then we're taking on two spell stutter spreads. Same thing. On the play, great. On the draw, a lot worse. Yeah. Really needs Bitter Blossom to uh, 
ramp out those fairies. And exactly. You're countering three and four in the spells easily and, with it. And you're controlling my battlefield a lot more. Like, you didn't take out much of your removal, and you added in removal that deals with a lot of my cards. So, I can't really expect that my spell stutter sprites are going to be reliable one mana or two mana one one counter target spell. You know, not really going to happen. So, all right, Rob, you got a question for us at all? Uh, no, unfortunately, no new questions, but I did have confirmation that, um, this is going to inflate his ego a little bit, but Ross was right. Uh, Fairy Conclave was originally templated as a, it becomes a blue creature, and then later, you know, it gained the fairy. So. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I am so Rob, smart. you can I am save so those comments. SMRT. Yes. Anytime that Ross is proven right, you can just inner monologue those and be like, you know what, this doesn't need to be said out loud. And yeah. also ban whoever did it. <laughs> and also, yeah, whoever. <laughs> it was it was Ross Merriam in the chat, actually. I, I did see you texting on your phone a little earlier, so... Ross's phone doesn't even work. I, I yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. <laughs> You're going to fix that when you fix your computer, right, tech savvy guy? Yeah, all my technology's breaking down. My body's breaking down. It's just, <laughs> sometimes you just got to give up. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> good plan, man. Good plan. Yeah. All right. I'm guessing you want to go second? I will uh, be on the play, actually. Oh. And if you have Land of War Elf and that land one more time, I swear to God, I'm going to do nothing, but I'll be sad. Okay. So hopefully I mulligan because apparently that's the secret to winning this matchup. Yeah, no <laughs> mulliganing kidding. on the play. <laughs> no kidding. Um, I have some good news and some bad news for you. Good news is I don't have Guiltly Palace. Yeah. Bad news is I obviously have Lionel Ralphs. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Are you mulliganing? Yeah, I probably have to mulligan. <laughs> now that you have Lionel Ralphs, I definitely have to mulligan. <laughs> yeah, well, my hand is very good. If this is a swamp, ah. Oh. <laughs> What what's become of me? <laughs> Have I changed since I'm like mulliganing and stuff now? Like, oh, but that hand is unplayable if I miss. So. <laughs> Todd, Todd would like to know how it feels to suspend ancestral. Oh man, it's glorious. That was glorious. Yeah, you, it's a legal card in modern. You can do it. That's true. That's true. It's not good, but all right, let's <laughs> try this again. Say, I do like the Patrick Sullivan jokes of suspended on turn one, die before it ever comes off suspended. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much how it is now. All right, well, I guess I'll keep, but it's not very good. We'll get one of these conclaves. In this game, I can't possibly win. Yeah. All right, I will draw. I will reveal Sower and Suspend Visions. Pass to you. Okay. Well, I like that my creature didn't die. Oh, yeah, it's safe. So I can play turn two Imperius Perfect. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. okay I'm going to play this one. Um, oh, this set three. I uh, missed your trigger. It actually goes up to five now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to play this and pass to you. Interesting. We're doing fine. Yeah, everything's okay. Everything's good. Uh, I will attack you with Lander Elves. Okay, I'm at 18. I will play a treetop village. Okay. And pass the turn. Okay, that's not bad. I needed that. <laughs> I mean, I'm good to make another elf. Yeah, I forgot that card messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll play this and I'll pass to you, and I'm going to die slowly but surely. Instead of making elf. Okay. Yeah, this hand uh, did not develop well. Um. I would like to declare an attack. Bring it. Send with the Elf Warrior token and the Land Worlds. I'll take it. 14. Two to 14, and I just have Guilt Leaf Palace and a pass of the turn. Okay. Um. Um. All right. One. Okay, that wasn't awful. I definitely needed that. I'll death mark this. I will make an Elf in response. Yep. And I'll pass to you. Ooh, no land. Yeah. Really? What of it? Doesn't need any lands, apparently. Doesn't need it. Um. Okay. I'll play Land of War Waste. Animate the treetop village. Okay. And attack with my creatures. Okay, I could animate Mutavault and try to eat a creature, but if you have a removal spell, then it's a train wreck for me, so I'm going to flash in and attempt to block. Uh, that's fine. You can take five. I'm a nine. 
And then I will play a Ren's Run Vanquisher, revealing the removal spell I just telegraphed. Oh, great. Quit, sweet. <laughs> and then I'll pass the turn. <laughs> Visions, be good to me. Okay. I probably need this card. Yes, please. <laughs> I forgot that was a card. Well, um, I'm going to play this, revealing the sower that I revealed earlier. Yep. Which is not as good right now, believe it or not. <laughs> Um, I am hmm. going to um, I'm going to say go and draw. Yep. Uh, play land or waste. I would like to declare an attack. Okay, I will. Don't want to animate treetop and get everything tapped down by a cryptic here. Five damage is enough. Yeah. I will tap bounce. Nice land drop, noob. Putting band aids on the problem. Band aids on the problem. Yeah, Playing Imperius perfect post combat. Okay pass the turn. All right. So am I dead if uh, you were to be able to connect with this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Mm. Maybe I have to risk it anyways. That is how you obtain the biscuit. That is how I do it. Proverbially speaking. Um. So if you attack, that would be... Yeah, I think this is the only window that I have to win the game or have a chance at it. So yeah, I'm going to play this and I'll die to double nameless inversion. Here we go. Um, I think it's my only hope. Pretty good. No, you don't have double nameless version. Six, seven, and I guess I'm still dead to land profane command as well. And I can't even sustain this for that long, so it's not like this is a great long term plan, but. Um. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll send with everybody. Okay, this soaks up the most damage, I yeah. believe. So yeah, we'll do that. I'll take so five. Five, go to four. Yep. I will play Civic Wayfinder. Okay. I'm gonna get a forest and play Treetop Village. Okay. And then pass the turn. All right. So beginning my upkeep, I'll pitch this Bitter Blossom. That ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I will draw and kill this. Yep. Do you have uh, four in hand? Five. Five. One of which I know is Sower Temptation. Yep. And one of which I know you have Nameless Inversion and in, in Land, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play Land and pass to you. Defense. Defense. Okay. Draw. Yep. Wait, maybe I'm not supposed to play that land. Yeah, sorry. I forgot. I gotta be conscious of discarding cards. Uh, enemy treetop? Yep. Declare an attack. Yep. Send in the clowns. Animate mutable. Animate is fine. Still before blocks, I will attempt a. Uh, you have how many? You said five still? Uh, five, yep. Yeah, I'll attempt a nameless inversion. Um. <clears throat> 
one land. Yeah. Okay. I'll scion. Sure. I will go like this, like this, and I could just take two. Yeah. Okay. You take two. I'm go at two, two, and you're still at 20? Yep. Okay. I will then play another treetop village and okay. pass the turn. All right. Upkeep. Discard river, and then beginning a draw step. So is is it first. before I draw? Okay, yeah. that's draw. a weird way to word it. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. It's just to make sure you needed to have the discard in order to get the three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Um, no, I guess I still just kind of have to leave Mastercore back almost like perpetually. So I'm going to attack for one. I'm a 19. Pass to you. I uh, will play Lanor Elves. Okay. Pass the turn. And discard. Draw. Kill that. Um. Hmm. Mastercore card is not okay. Yeah, Mastercore is pretty good here, huh? <laughs> Um, I'm going to animate Mutavault. Yep. And uh, I'm going to attack for four. Puts me to 15. Fast you. You know what your deck could use? Veil of Summer. <laughs> Be pretty good against fairies. Yeah, the Razor Master Core play, I knew you had one nameless, so you had another one I was just dead, but it put me in a position where I could actually win. And I think I had to take the risk, otherwise the game just ended. Yep. Um, and I probably lost the game by playing that land absentmindedly. The into the when I bounced, yeah, yeah, yep. Think if I have that extra treetop. Yeah. And honestly, that was a lot of fairies' trickiness too. Like I, even like most people, you'd always misbind click during draw step, right? So when yeah. you get people with like the block misbind before damage kind of thing, I got so many people with that. So it was a very difficult deck to play against. It it is very tough. Um, it's kind of like, is it now, you know, just where you, you do, you do one thing that could line up perfectly well against your opponent, or it could be walking right into him. I guess that's just magic these days, but. Hmm. Hmm, Yes. Decisions, decisions, eh? Yeah, I'm just going to pass. Okay. Uh, untap. Discard Sower. Draw, kill the elf. Um, I'll attack for six. I go to nine. Pass to you. May have. Okay, I was going to say, do I have to start killing my own creatures? That'd be bad. <laughs> Even dealing three here, you, you've cast that nameless, right? Yeah. Okay, but still. I'm at nine. Um, that's... That is a bit of a tilter. A tilteroo? A tilterino. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to cast a Civic Wayfinder. Okay. Let's get a swamp this time, I guess. Play it. Okay. 
And I will pass the turn. Um, <clears throat> end step. Going to bounce draw. I will respond. Okay. Evoke Cloud Thresher. No! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Cloud Thresher! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no! What was your other card? Oh, uh, Bramble Paragon. I couldn't play both okay. of these and still leave up the Evoke. So if I extend both creatures, I could yeah. leave up... Uh, I have three men afterwards, so I'd be able to ha like leave up all of these as blockers. Yeah. But you just go and step, tap my team. I have no hand. Or yeah. I have one card in hand. But you just tap my team, bounce three top village, and I'm dead. That's what I was That's what yeah. I was trying to line up, and I had double cryptic, so yeah, like... Even if I have Nameless Inversion on the Scion, double Mutavolt, exactly. and Razor nine, so... Yeah, so you, you don't even have so to... So I was still kind of in a rough spot, because once I just kind of forgot about Clar Cloud Thrasher, well, but next turn I was kind of going to go for it anyways, but... I, I think what happens is if you just play patiently, you discard an irrelevant card, kill my yeah. Wayfinder, make the same attack, yeah. and set up to win the following turn, I literally have to... Uh, evoke and evoke then top and deck, and, profane. And top deck, yeah. Yeah. Either, well, Dang profane, it. squall line, or Cloud Thrasher all would have been Yeah, fine. that's true, and that's actually, true. Actually... What would be even better for you is to attack with Razor Mane and a Mutavault. Yeah. Because I can't both evoke Cloud Thresher and stay above uh, yeah. two at that point. So I yeah, even, if we get at the same damage, then you yeah. can't kill me. So yeah. you, you t turn some of my outs to win and Dang it. outs to just draw. Dang it. Yeah, I chucked that one, I suppose. Oh, yeah, just a little bit impatient there. Yeah, I, I, just, I was like, okay, your sorcery speed, profane command kills me. Like, you you can sideboard. You sideboard in those cards. So, yeah, that was great job by me, y'all. Uh, I did not play like Utah. No. I did not play like Utah that at all. That was not Utah-esque. No, no, no. Okay, well, GG. Ross takes it down. I'm a knucklehead. So, we're going to head to the next round. What do you got for the second one? Uh, so, Corey's going to be playing a modern version of, of the deck that Utah played at a Grand Prix in Las yep. Vegas. This is 2017. Yeah. Notably, the year that Crixus Death Shadow was the breakout deck in modern all yeah. year. So, so I would nine be years later from this GP win. Yes. Yes. Still <laughs> playing fairies. Still playing fairies. And honestly, against Crixus Shadow, your spell setter sprites are probably pretty good. Spell setter sprites are pretty good. You have to be a little wary about how much damage you can deal yourself yeah, because we, we fairies can kind that. of yeah yeah same so it's gonna be an interesting matchup and i'll try to play closer to yuta takahashi because that was my bad so all right everyone we're gonna take a short five minute break we'll be right back with round number two here on versus live All right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Ballmeister. And I'm Ross Miriam. And we got Rob in the booth. Say Cloud Thresher still sucks, Rob. Cloud Thresher still sucks, Rob. God, a card still haunts my dream. I didn't stop playing fairies ever. Like, when <laughs> it was in standard, I just, I was unflinching. I loved that style of deck. And Cloud Thresher was still pestering me. Even into, remember, the next generation of Cloud Thresher decks, it was just the, um, that land that produced... All mana and vivid lands, the vivid mana base plus reflecting pool. Uh, yep. And that turned into that five color weird thing where they would just Quick play toast. Quick and Toast. Yeah, that's right. I think Cedric would approve of that name now, right? Oh, yeah, that one's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was the funniest thing. So I was watching the world championship coverage um, and Cedric and Ailey were doing uh, coverage together, right? And I think, I think she just said at one point like wet gruel or something and he's like this pains me with controlling the naming of Star City games and stuff. He's just like, just, just no, just no. And then he brought up moist gruel for <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, and just reminds me of all the absurd names of decks back in this time frame. Quick and toast. Come on, what does that even mean? It's a French, uh, like fast food chain restaurant. Okay, like French beef. How did it? Came up, how just, did it have to do with the deck? I think they came up with the deck while eating one, at one. Wow. I don't. I don't remember the exact story, but it, wow, it's it's very um, anti not anticlimactic, but it's it's banal. No, okay. Better or worse, than just calling everything X mid range. <laughs> I do prefer quick and toast. Don't get me wrong, but 
Rob will be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns. Make sure to tag at Star City Games, and he will get his favorite one sent over to us. It is Utah Takahashi Day. We are celebrating Utah's huge win. I think I can safely say for everyone that was watching, it was amazing to see. You know, it was amazing to see someone that loves magic so much to take something down. You know, a lot of these players at the top, sure, they still enjoy the game, but not to the pure love of Yuta Takahashi. Like, he, you know Yuta, Andrea Mangucci, they're playing casual magic outside of playing their tournament. You know some of the other players are, when they're done, they're like, I'm not playing until I have to play the next tournament. So it's always nice to see the people that truly love the game take it down. Uh, and it was incredible. If you didn't get to watch it, uh, make sure to go back and check that out because it was really and cool. But I really, uh, I don't, I, I guess we were a few years ago, there was the Invitational where Caleb Shearer went on a crazy run, and he won like you know 12 matches in a row. Yeah, he to, stormed off. Yeah. To win it. Uh, it was actually the one tournament where he wasn't playing Storm. Uh, <laughs> it was you know, before Modern Storm really reemerged. It's still a Las Vegas Invitational. Yeah, it was a Las Vegas Invitational in like okay. 2017, maybe. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, he you know was looking on the outside. He was on the outside looking in for the Players' Championship, needed a good tournament, started off like one and two. Mm -hmm. And then, or maybe one and three, and then rallied off like infinite wins in a row to win the win the tournament, which was the only way he was going to make the PC. Wow! Uh, and just th those kind of runs, they don't happen very often. Well, <laughs> as you say that, the people who took first, second, and third at the World Championship started o three one two one two. Deprav one two his draft. Uh, Jan Merkel one two his draft as well, and then Andre three would uh, yeah. in fourth place. But pretty pretty wild when you look at that. Well, oh, just shows you that limited doesn't matter at all. Limited doesn't matter <laughs> at all. N you don't have to be good at it. This comes from the draft expert of the <laughs> last <laughs> event, so yikes. Um, but anyways, we are doing a bunch of Yuta Takahashi decks today. We started with his GP winning deck in 2008 in standard. Now we're going to GP Vegas. I believe he took around 22nd. I don't think he ever won a GP with... 24th. 24th? Okay, I don't I'm, think... I'm playing the 22nd place list. On the okay, track, I don't think Utah ever won in this age. This is 2017 with Modern Fairies. And, uh, you know, I'll say it. Modern Fairies is not necessarily a good deck at this time frame. It's definitely losing its steam pretty quickly. Utah was the only person who could win with it. He was the only person playing it, too. <laughs> just because I think people realized that it wasn't that good. But he just played it because he loved it, right? When Bitter Blossom got unbanned, people definitely tried. Yeah, yeah. They did not succeed. No. Utah tried way harder than all of them and succeeded a lot more than everyone else and found interesting ways to build the deck. But yeah. very di like This is a very different fairy stack than previous builds. Mm -hmm. it is a, it's more of a mid-rangey deck. It's got Liliana of the Veil. Yeah. And Bitter Blossom is a way to sort of grind value a little bit more. It's mm -hmm. less tempo-oriented, but still has that ability to press forward. And the main, you know, determining factor to whether, as to whether the deck was even remotely playable was always the viability of a spell starter sprite in the metagame. How yes. good were your sprites? How reliable were they, you know, past even turn two? And as we mentioned before the break, this was the Grixis Death Shadow era that summer. You know, should, that's when people were talking about if we needed to ban Death Shadow. It was the summer of death. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th that's a deck with a, a very low curve. Uh, outside of the Delve creatures, which, you know, you're playing a Tasker anyway, so you've even got some of that action going on. Yep. And they were able to, you know, counter Death Shadows on turn four with their spell sitter sprites pretty frequently, and the Death Shadow also dealing themselves damage helped you, so this was an interesting match for fairies, and one that I thought it was r pretty reasonable in, mm -hmm. uh, and that was why, I, you know, we saw it pop up around that time, and, and YouTube was playing it, because yeah. anytime it was remotely playable. Yeah, you know, that's true. I, I wonder what his Bitter Blossoms look like. They must, I bet they must cool. be horribly beat. HP'd. <laughs> yeah. They, they've been shuffled, what, 10, 15,000 times? Yeah, yeah. They probably look exactly like your Whisper Squads if you played a, <laughs> if you played a lot of Paper Magic at that time. But, um, yeah, and over the years, this was not Utah's last time playing Blue Black Fairies. Oh, I'm there sure. was There was another GP, and it was very clear the only change is Jace got unbanned. So there was Jace in there, and it was just looking slower and slower into just a mere control that had Bitter Blossom, but it was still fairies. We're labeling it still fairies. Once you, once, so. you, all you, once you have Bitter Blossom, Mutaval, and Spellfitter Sprite, you're fairies. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the trifecta that really makes the deck. Everything Cedric still, at this point, Cedric might be like, alright, this is Blue Black midrange, y'all. <laughs> but it, <laughs> Demir midrange. Demir midrange, excuse me. Me. And All right. I'm actually going to be playing a list, like I said, I believe it was 22nd from that same Grand Prix, but okay. it's from another world champion. 
This is a Brian Brown Doings versus oh, Death Shadow list. A BBD. Uh, yes. We, uh, you mean a versus live alum? <laughs> World champion is the second thing you say. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. Said, we are the peak of competitive. Exactly. Right? Has he been on Crooky's stream? Because we had list that first. No, no, no. He was the second most growing streamer in the month of November in 2020, though. There was like a big glitch that for some reason put him up there. So now BBD just lays on that all the time. Yeah, put that in the resume. <laughs> he does. Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Yeah, you good? Uh, yeah, you're on the point. Okay. Um, I guess we have to play magic. Yeah, I suppose we do. Um, yeah, I suppose my mana base is not like a triome mana base and stuff. So I'm going to play this. This is untapped. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Pass to you. Okay. Well, I will. Uh, yeah, I just want to walk down memory lane all day. This is This is fun. I'm going to take three, go to 17, get a watery grave, and inquisition you. Okay. You may take Snapcaster or Fatal Push. I will take the Snapcaster Mage. The classic decision. Take the Snapcaster or the card that the Snapcaster is going to bring yeah. back. Yeah. You generally just take the card advantage card. Yep. All right. I'm going to play this, and I'm going to pass to you. Okay. I am going to... Uh, play a Bloodstained Mire and Thought Sees You. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Well, I will... Yeah, I will take the Liliana of the Veil. <laughs> yeah, I figured. It's me to 15. I was like, I got Yeah, That's going to be a good one. Then I'm going to go to 12. Is it Death Shadow O'Clock? Not with you having a Fatal Push right there. Well, you got Luris to bring it back, right? <laughs> a little bit before Luris's time. Where are you? Instead, I'll get another watery grave and okay. set up with a serum visions. And I, I will say the it, it's shocking, but the Grixis Death Shadow now is so much of a better deck than that Grixis Death Shadow was. You know, like weird how four years of cards will make your deck better. Yeah, that's true. Was there even Bobble in that deck? Or? No, because you were a Snapcaster deck. Bobble was weird with Snapcaster. Oh, that's right. That's right. Where's your Regavans? You still playing those? Or Ooh, that was a good draw. Um. Let's uh, bottom one, top the other, okay, and pass the turn. All right, I'm going to sack this. Just take so it one. Puts you to Nineteen. I'll get a grave as well. Yeah, this really was the summer of uh, summer of death, huh? Summer of death shadow with all these graves running around this format. All right, so I'm gonna go to nineteen. All right, I will draw. Um. Hmm. Very interesting draw. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll play Liliana of the Veil. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just, I was just debating if I want to tick up and what I discard. So if I tick up, I just want to discard this, I suppose. Um, but yeah, let's do it. I will also discard a Fatal Push. Pass to you. Well, let's uh, <laughs> cycle this Street Wraith, go to 10. Okay. I still have a pretty good play here. Uh oh. Um. Well, then I will uh, go to eight. Okay. Blood Crypt. I will go to six to Thoughts Easier Cryptic Command. Okay. And now. Which... Yeah, maybe I should have just discarded the land, I guess. And then I'll play two seven sevens. Oh my god. Okay. Nice turn. Yeah, I had, I had both shadows last turn, but and I had the fatal push in case you had spell starter for my thought seize. All right, get rid of one. Yep. Yeah, I screwed that up by not discarding land. Pass to you. That was a great draw. Attack your lily. All right, uh, and then I will play a Tassiger. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it matters. I guess I want to leave spells. Okay. Well, I do have Colgan's command as well, so let's leave the shadow. I guess I can get rid of a thought seize. Okay, I'm probably just dead. Yeah, oh, I'm so dead. I don't have damnation in this deck or anything. So you're at 18 to my 6? Yep. Yeah, I chucked that one, y'all. I chucked it bad. I'm not playing like Yutsu Takahashi, believe it or not. <laughs> Pass to you. Uh, attack you for 11. I'll take it. Puts you to 7. Yep. And play a Delta and pass. Okay. Um, 
I'll play a land and pass to you. Attack you for 11. Um... I will cast Snapcaster Mage. This is after I attack? Yeah. Um, I will respond with a Thought Scour on myself. Okay. Oh, would have liked that Kooligan's command. Yeah. Um, yeah, your Snapcaster resolves. I'll target. Fatal push. Sure. Block. Yep. And I'll fatal push. I will stubborn denial the push. I'm dead. Yeah, that game just completely unraveled. If I discard land, especially since I drew land four, that way you oh, thought yeah. sees you either take fatal push or cryptic command, and then I use the other one. Yeah, maybe I probably have to take Lily. push and just hope you don't draw land. And then yeah, you would. because if I, I'm just playing. Well, at that point, because I had drawn, I had all three creatures. At that point, I just don't thought sees you, and I yeah. just play three creatures. Yeah. Then, then the cryptic is with the four land is still good. Yeah, that's true. Then I make you sack, and then cryptic tap draw, and then you make me sack again and push the end. Well, we pushed. Then you old shadow. thoughtsy is that, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah either way, yeah, that yeah, felt rough. For that, but then you just need to find like any removal spell, and you're fine. Yeah, that was just and, a and classic. You at least get two two kill spells off with the Liliana. Yeah, that was just a classic game from Death Shadow where you were able to deal with all my answers right before you played your threats, and I didn't have anything proactive like a recall or a bitter blossom to like get ahead. I drew the Liliana on yeah. time, which was nice, but that's all you had to fight. And yeah, you did I, I was a, I was a, because I was under no pressure. I was able to just fire off all my disruption first, and then fire all my threats when you had nothing left to yeah. answer them. I really hope this show. I'm not gonna lie. I've never been one. I've never wanted to be swept on versus live, but I think it would just be so fitting if I just get swept with three Yuta Takahashi decks, and I'd be <laughs> like, we proved today that Yuta's really good, <laughs> and we'll win with his Yuta Takahashi decks that maybe we shouldn't be playing at the time. Uh, I mean, excluding fairies. Fairies in standard was insane. Yeah. You know, but I think that would be fitting. Just be like, okay, I couldn't win with any of these decks from Utah, but Utah won with all of them. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Can we get an article from him detailing all of your mistakes? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just I creating Cedric content. Is watching and paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just get the Utah tempo primer. Yes. Okay, I'll be going first. Rob, do you got a question for us at all while we get uh, ready for our second game? I don't at the moment. Empty Q. Excellent. Okay, I will go first. You're going down. Um, yeah, I'll keep. It's not amazing, but... Um, uh, yeah, I'll keep. All right, pass to you. Uh, let's... Crack a tarn. Okay. Go to 17 for a watery grave. Okay. Yeah. This original version of Grixis Shadow is much more of a demure deck as opposed to the modern version that's much more Rakdos. Yeah. That's because Ragaman and DRC are pretty good. Yep. They've switched the game. And the speed of modern is such that the mediocre cantrips just aren't good enough anymore. Yeah. Revisions is just too slow. Yep. Agreed. Which is why I'll cast on a turn one. <laughs> okay. Good call. Yep. Uh, one on top, one on the bottom. Okay. And you're up. All right. It's on. Bitter Blossom. Pass to you. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time a Bitter Blossom gets cast, you to, even if, I know it's super late uh, over where he lives right now, so I, I bet he's just waking up. Be like, someone cast Bitter Blossom? I know I would be. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm going to crack a delta, go to 16. Okay. Get a swamp. Ooh, someone's scared. Someone's scared. And uh, cast this far too late Inquisition of Kozilek. <laughs> okay, well, I still got some goods. Um, 
So Demir off. It's Demir. Can hmm. you beat a second Bitter Blossom? Because I'll play it. I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. That is <laughs> a hand. It is not a bad hand. Got the old creeping tar pits to give you the business. When you play that tar pit at the end of game one with me at six, I was scared. I, was like, Ooh, I might lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, God, this is a really tough decision, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to take your Inquisition of Kozilek. Okay. Pass the turn. You're not afraid of Bitter Blossom. Okay, so. 19. Ross thinks I'm going to be a fool and play Creeping Tar Pit and Bitter Blossom to give him the chance to stubborn denial. I'm not doing that. I'll ta Never mind. Pass to you. Yeah, you can't do it. <laughs> I'm not falling for it, Ross Merriam. That was a good draw. Uh-oh. Wish I had taken Bitter Blossom now. <laughs> yeah, you always take Bitter Blossom. You fool. You absolute fool. Still going to cast it. I've got a 14 and play Liliana. Oh. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Okay. You're up. <laughs> All right, I'll take two. You're at 17. Um, I will draw. Um, I'll snap Inquisition you. Oh, you had a stubborn denial? No way. Okay. Culligan's Command is probably the card that annoys me the most. Just because you can kill my Tar Pit. Otherwise, Tar Pit's going uh, unleashed. This is going to give you the Zombie Fish. Um, but I guess that's not that big of a deal. I don't really care about the Stubborn Denial at all. Snapcaster is good. But yeah, let's get rid of that. I'm going to play this and pass to you. Um, yeah, I'll go to 12 and cycle a straight race. Okay. Um, and you want to play with those revealed too? I completely forgot already. Sure. Sweet. Play a tapped watery grave. Play a Gurmag Angler leaving the Serum Visions. Okay. Delving five, and then I will plus Liliana on a Fairy, so that Fairy plus Tarpet is not enough. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Fifteen. Um... All right, here comes Tarpet. Attack Liliana. Goes to one. Pass to you. Uh, cast Snapcaster. Okay. Target Serum Visions. Sure. Visions it up. Uh, one <coughs> on top, one on bottom. Okay. Top A. Cycle Street Wraith go to 10. Okay. Attack with Gurmag Angler. Um, I probably should just always be blocking. So if I block, you tick up here. Fairies can finish this. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'll block. Okay. Go fairy. Okay. Play a blood crypt tapped and play a three three shadow. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. I will take two down to 13. I will draw a card. You have four in hand now? Yep. Play a land. Um, and, and I know you just have Stubborn Denial and one other card. Yep. Okay. 
I will fatal push that. Tar pit you and hit these. Puts me to seven. Yep. And pass to you. Uh, attack for seven. I'll block them both. It's, yeah, you Puts me anything. to nothing. I'll Inquisition you. Okay. Uh, take the snap. Okay. I'll snap the Inquisition, take the push. Okay. Rude. And I'll pass the turn. All right. Eight, Eleven. Eleven. A draw. Um... All right, tar pit, they're coming in. A two. Pass to you. Come on, battle rage. Oh, God. <laughs> I couldn't do anything against it. Actually, that would have done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still lethal. Well, I'm just trying to punt <laughs> as many times as possible today. I'm trying to set a new record. We, we talked a lot about how managing life totals plus or minus a point is very relevant. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought you were still playing dress down as your win, but I guess that wasn't printed yet, huh? Uh, so I'm bad news. What? I don't have any of my main? Nope. Ah, oh, yes. I knew I had one on the board. I figured there was one in the main. Once again, Rob, stop bringing up points that are going to make Ross sad. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> All I right, assume okay. there was one in the main. I didn't even check. Yeah. What the heck? These decks just didn't want to kill people back in the day. Yep. I guess they did play out more as a control deck. Huh? Terminates, I think. Are in the the battle oh, rages were a little bit less important for Grixis lists back in the day because they were playing more of a grindy game plan. Yeah, they were literally um, trying to be the control deck against other aggressive decks. Right? And, and other shadow decks. Yeah. The original yeah. Shadow, fair shadow deck that emerged was Jund. And oh, yeah. The Grixis decks emerged to beat the Jund decks. And they yeah. also had blue counter magic to beat like the Tron over the top decks yeah. that Jund didn't have. So. Tarmogoyf just always had like different versions to just like slaughter the Tarmogoyf decks. Like Tarmogoyf hasn't been mm. in a great spot in a while. Uh, well, it's gotten better now. The The big yeah. thing that, that punished Tarmogoyf was the printing of Fatal Push. Like it, That's true. That's but, true. You know, Tarmogoyf was the great creature that dodged Bolt, and then because of the printing of Fatal Push, it just be, we had to find new ones. If yeah. Fatal Push came with Gurmag Angler, which, you know, uh, yeah. not it, it, it was weird because it's always awkward. And now Prismatic Ending has not done it any favors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always awkward when the removal spell that forces you away from one threat to another, and the, the one it forces you to is the same color as the removal spell that forced the change, because <clears> then <throat> it doesn't really get rid of the removal spell, because they just get played together. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened with Fatal Push and Gurmag Angler. It's why this deck was so good for so long. People yeah. like it. Fatal Push was such a seismic shift in the modern metagame, the modern landscape, that it took a full year for people to really figure it out. How to beat a giant two-drop. Like, what a <laughs> What a time to be alive. Like, a creature that just was better at blocking than attacking mm -hmm. just because it has one extra toughness. Like, honestly, that... That, it's kind of crazy, but when a really good creature has more toughness than power, it shapes a metagame. You know? Even as... Even as... You know, you're gonna love this comment. Even as crazy as Thraven Inspector in Standard then, that made attacking pretty tough. You know? Now it's nice just... Nice career. Yeah, now it's just every threat has like way more power than toughness so it's just everybody's jamming blocking isn't that doesn't happen that often um but yeah it's kind of a weird weird dichotomy wouldn't you think yeah tarmograve definitely you know it's saw playing control decks in its day i remember oh, yeah. seeing them in like times where i block constructed like a four color control deck with those four tarmograve oh yeah brad played uh, for the longest time he top aided like 150 ptqs in a row with uh Counter top goif, yeah, you know, next, I guess. Next level blue. Next level blue. Like, yeah, he played that constantly, and I'm just, I just little kid my way into my first PTQ <laughs> top eight with Dredge, and I'm just slam it down. And it got me to the Pro Tour in 2008 yeah, in Hollywood. Yeah, that, so that deck was broken. So <laughs> that deck was broken. Yeah, there was a breakthrough in that in that <laughs> list. So. <laughs> Yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah. We're going to take a short break here. We're 1-1 one, one in the second match. The Corey's still clinging to the mm. to possibility of reclaiming the marbles. Needs to take this next game. We're going to take a short break, get some sideboarding set up, and finish out our second match here between Demir Fairies and Grix's Death Shadow in Modern Circuit 2017 here on Versus Live. Yatta! Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Grix's Death Shadow and Demir Fairies, a la Yuta Takahashi. Oh, yeah. Uh, on my side, really just want to get a lot of the spot removal out of my deck. 
You know, in the modern version, you don't see the sign of Unis, you don't see the misbind clicks, you don't see the pester mites that we saw on standard. So all the creatures that would be good to one for one with removal don't show up in the format yeah. that has incredible one mana spot removal, unsurprisingly. <laughs> yeah. And all the creatures that are in the deck are it's really just Bitter Blossom tokens, Snapcaster mages, and there's one Tassiger, and then one Warm Coil engine in the sideboard. So yeah. not a lot to kill here. I can just tell already from looking at nine years difference worth of Utah's deck. Yuto loves having one just Haymaker artifact in the sideboard in his blue-black deck, which I, I'm i here for. I'm yeah. a fan. Sometimes you turn your... It's your, my Master Core. <laughs> sometimes you just turn into a Demir Control deck. Yeah, I like uh, it. So what do you mean? It's already a Demir yeah. Control deck. So I'm going to be cutting my Terminates and a couple of the Fatal Pushes, because there's only four cards in the sideboard I really want to bring in. A couple extra stubs uh, to help protect my creatures, get those Cryptic Commands. Mm -hmm. Another Liliana, which is one of my better cards. And then that Battle Rage that I needed to top deck to win the game. Yeah. Uh, that was not in my deck. We're going to get that one in there this time. Good call for the content that yeah. uh, I'll be dying to that next game, I assume. I, I have chosen to leave myself vulnerable to the one Tasker, seeing as I'm not leaving in Terminate. I'd rather just have one mana Fatal Pushes to clear away potential blockers yeah. and apply pressure to you than really worry about a one mana four or five yeah, I mean, I you got a you got a holy heat now right like <laughs> <laughs> it's a one mana four or five that i can often um you know ignore I, I, well just trump on the battlefield like yeah. i have taskers of my own and i have gourmet anglers that are bigger and death shadows that are often bigger so i'm not that worried about the one tasker i okay. think the scenarios where i'm trying to close out a game and i get to get a, a kill a blocker and deal a big chunk of damage are much more valuable to me so I'm choosing to leave in two Fatal Pushes instead of the two Terminates. Okay, so from my end, Cryptic Commands and Remands are both not great against you when you have four Stubborn Denial. You know, something that doesn't come up that often in the modern day Grixis Death Shadow decks. And it does change what I, you know, that's still the deck that I've been playing for Modern a lot, yeah. so I relate a lot to it um, as what it is now. And it's changed a lot of the matchups, some for the better with all the new creatures, but losing out on the way that this deck was built with Stubborn Denial and stuff has made some of my matchups worse. You know, Burn in particular, uh, Burn and any Tron, combo. not amazing either, yeah, you Tron. know? Yeah, so... Uh, or Yeah, that is non-creature, right? It is so non-creature. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, it was very good against Tron. Yep, yep. So, I mean, those are, the, those are my worst two matches now, and that wasn't the case back with Death Shadow before. So, you know, maybe I'll have to start taking some stuff from this style of deck to bring it to the Invitational. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to trim on Remand and Cryptic Command. I could see it being the other way as well. Take out two Cryptics, one Remand, but I don't know. So uh, I'm just once yeah. again, hopefully Yuta's watching and can tell me how wrong I sideboarded in every one of his matchups. Uh, I hope he does that too. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> that's why you put me on the Yuta decks, huh? You're just like, ah, I... I don't want to. I don't want to show up his his deck building by it, bad sideboarding. It, huh? It's so I can tell you that I would have played them much better than you, but I don't actually mm. have to prove it. Okay, <laughs> smart. <laughs> Low risk, high reward. <laughs> I like it. Smart man. Okay, Rob, do you got a question at all yet? Um, before we shuffle up for this final game of round two. Uh, we did have a question. Uh, you were talking about Serum Visions not being good enough. Do you think that if it were unbanned, Priority would also fit in that category now? Um, probably not. Preordain is a significantly like, like some cantrips still do see play. Yeah, uh, you know you see um, uh, thought scour often. That's more thought scour is a dark ritual though. Yeah, because decks, of the mana yeah. it saves you later on. Yeah, but preordain provides a level of consistency that I think it would still be good. Maybe not as much in fair decks, yeah. but I think it would help enable different combo strategies to and give them a level of consistency that they haven't had yeah. before and raise them. So uh, just, you know, at a certain point, power level trumps some of the issues with it, uh, or it can, and that Preordain is uh, several levels ahead of Serum Vision. So. I'll be the hot take. Uh, unban it. I don't think it'd do much. I, this, these threats are already so good, you can't play cantrips. I don't know. I think unban it. Unban it. I think like a taxi and pro being a cantrip that you get to see your hand, like, forget about that. That card's too good. The free peak is... Don't even... Is too strong, but I think Gitaxian Pro like would that. be okay. Gitaxian Pro would be busted. Yeah, Gitaxian Pro would be too much, but I think Preordain would be okay. That's my hot oh. take for the day. Oh, Gitaxian Pro. <laughs> would you just put it in every deck? I mean, it would either be in an Arclight Phoenix deck, a Death Shadow deck, or some combination oh, of the two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. Can we, can we play Arclight Shadow? Is that a thing? Arclight Shadow. 
I'd, I'd have my and I'd play my preordains and I'd have my gut shots. You go wrong and I would just preordain it a gut shot and get you. Oh man. Yeah, that might actually bring that deck back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then give you faithless looting back too, just just in case. <laughs> yeah, just in case we needed it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it would enable some of the really busted turn twos where you'd yeah. just go, you know, probe you manamorphose faithless mending, let's go. But I think that's the product of uh it being free. You know, oh, if yeah. Cataxian Pro automatically cost one. It wouldn't be that good, but that's why preordain I think would be fine right now. So eat me alive, chat. Whatever, whatever. That's a hot take for that the is, day. That is a hot take. Yeah, uh, I'm on the play here for game three. I will yeah. keep my hand. But leave GTA on the ban list. That one's too good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll keep two. Right. I will uh, play a scalding tarn and pass it. Oh baby, baby, <laughs> baby, pass to you. Uh, end step. I'm gonna go to seventeen. Okay. Okay. Um, where are you? Get the same land I always get. Okay. And I will thought scour myself. Yeah, it's pretty funny because it's uh, the Death Shadow decks now. It's a Blood Crypt deck, you know? It, it, it is funny how it shifted, but it's still somewhat close. Yeah. Your disruption is, well, your disruption is even more red heavy now these days with all the red removal. Yeah, and Holy Heat's just the best removal spell. Get those Snapcasters out of there. You didn't want them. There's a new champion in Magic now. <laughs> and what is it? Mm. Yuta Takahashi. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, okay. Yeah, ah, I, those were not good draws. Yeah, I'm thinking Yuta's uh, card that he's going to have a likeness. It's got to be like Bitter Blossom re reprint, maybe. That'd be cool. Maybe we'll just get a return to Lorin just so they can make a busted fairy card. Yeah. <laughs> go to 15 to cycle that. Return to Lorwyn and Yuta Takahashi is the fairy king. Um, let's crack a tarn. I'm going to go to 12. Okay. Get a blood crypt. Okay. And... Um, yeah, I'll play a Gurmag Angler. Zombie fish, okay. Zombie fish, you're up. All right. Three, draw. Um, I have a Shores and I'll pass to you. And draw. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Um,. Play a Delta, get in for five. Okay, 15. 15 to 12, I'll pass the turn. Okay, I will drop this to two, draw. I will play a Muta Vault and pass to you. Instead of crack Delta, Yep. go to 11. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to 11. I'm going to get this uh, basic island. Okay. And I would like to Thought Scar myself. I'm going to spell starter sprite that. That is fine. Okay. And go to my turn. Sure. Um, Meyer, attack for five. Um, yeah, I'll block. Crack this mire. Go to ten. Okay. This one will just get a swamp. Okay. And I will cast a Tassiger. Tassiper. Um. Okay. That's the turn. I'm scared. One. Um. I'll play. I'll play this land. And <clears throat> I'll pass to you. Uh, play Delta, declare an attack. Um, sure. Get in for nine. All right, I'll attempt to kill this. I will stubborn denial. Yeah, pretty clear you had that from the beginning. Puts you to six. Yep. Okay, post combat, I will inquisition you. Gross. Um, huh. I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm looking for. I feel pretty good about my spot. Mm -hmm. This needs to be good. 
think you're at six right now. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, I guess that. Yeah. Because you have the mutable, they got to take the Liliana. Okay. I'm going to crack this at end step. Two to five. Yep. Uh, get a watery grave tapped. Uh, and five's okay since I can block Angler and take Tassic or go to one. I mean, that's not okay, but it's something. Okay. Recall myself. Sure. Oh, one, two, three. Hope it was good. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be good enough, but I hope it was as well. Hmm. Um, I'll play a land. I think I'm at the point where I just have to cryptic and hope for the best since, well, none of my cards really do anything outside of that. <laughs> so, yeah, I will suspend recall. Yep. And upkeep. Snap the stub. God, lame. <laughs> if I could do it once, you know, I have somewhat of a chance. But yeah, it got me good. Yeah, unfortunately, your good. fatal pushes not very good against Tasker not very good. And, Dangler. and I, that's all I was drawing. <laughs> so, yep, GG. Uh, we're we're both sort of playing a bit of a tempo game. Me with big creature stubborn denial, and you with sort of bitter blossom. You're going a little bit bigger than I am. Yeah, and yeah. that's a problem in the tempo mirror because it means I'm able to get underneath you. Yeah, so stubborn exactly. denial is a really critical card. Definitely beats cryptic command in that yeah. sort of fight. Uh, and that's yeah. really what determined the outcome of the match. And honestly, like I remember Grixis Death Shadow at that at that time was kind of struggling against Blue White a little bit because they had rest in peace for all the anglers uh, to get to yeah. get ahead of that and something path, proactive path to do. Were very good. And then Path was the big thing as well as Verdict. You automatically had that that stub proof piece of removal, and uh, you played a lot of them. You know, so the redundancy of blue white kind of got you there, but with blue black, without having that da uncounterable damnation, I bet this matchup was still pretty tough. And it came down to the delve creatures because yeah. I have a lot of answers for your normal creatures, but the delve ones were tough. Yeah, you really needed yeah. uh, to have something like go for the throat for a matchup yeah. like this would have been helpful. Just a little bit, something a little bit cheaper than, mm -hmm. than Hero's Downfall, but yeah. uh, your Fatal Pushes not being good was a problem. Yeah. I think you were well set up against the rest of my deck, but Delve Creature Stubborn Denial yeah. is really tough, and my draw was just very heavy on that in Game 3. And then just whenever I played Bitter Blossom in this matchup, you lost badly. Like, <laughs> it, it came down to a cloches game, but you were dead very early on on yeah. that game, you know? But I, I, tried. Yeah. I tried. You did try. You did try. So I, I think you would have, like... Uh, I think you would have liked, yeah, so just some a little better removal. I guess you, you have Liliana the Veils in your deck. I guess yep. that was your answer to, to Delve Threats, but you weren't really able to land one in that game. Yeah, like, I, it was very obvious you had Stubborn Denial when you played Angler because you left one blue open. Yeah, extra you know, Delve. Yeah, and I could have just played that on turn three, but it wasn't good um, if you had it, and you did. Yeah. So I was trying to set up a turn where I could play Liliana plus Stubborn Denial, or plus Spell Stutter, something yeah. like that to push far ahead, but yeah, really? didn't have the time to do it. If I was on the play, I think i win that game, yeah. but... Really, Bitter uh, Blossom is your only card that punishes me for just playing out all my disruption first yeah. before playing my threats, uh, and you had the, you won the game you had it, you lost the games where you didn't. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's going to do it for our second match. Unfortunately, I didn't win with any fairies, but I think Utah would have for sure won at least one of those uh, matches. He would have won the first match easily. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I punted you, that you one. You probably would have won that match in 2008, too. Yeah, I think... <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, yeah, that wasn't my finest yeah, hour. It's not just Utah who's looking down on you. It's also 15-year-old Corey. Yeah, yeah. 2008 Corey is like, wow, you have lost it, dude. <laughs> what has become of you? You have, you have gone so that's for sure. So that's going to do it for the first two matches. Ross takes down both of those. Now we're going to head back to standard and truly celebra celebrate. Celebrate your from standard, though. That's true. We're heading back to new standard, current we're, we're standard. Back to the future. Back to the future. <laughs> back to the present with Yuta Takahashi's world championship winning deck. And you're going to be playing, gentlemen, with the Pros decks, right? Yeah, we're replaying the finals here. The replaying two gold fan dragon decks going against each other. Still another just sort of tempo y mirror. It's yep. like tempo slash mid range. It's, that's all. That's what Yuta does. So yep. that's what we're doing. It's going to be Chariot, Auron's Epiphany, uh, Dual Decks coming at you next round, replaying the World Championship, and hopefully I don't get swept here. So we're going to take a short five minute break, and we'll be right back with round number three. <laughs> hey.
Hello, and a welcome back to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth say, you're no Yuta Takahashi, Corey, Rob. You're no Yuta Takahashi, Corey, Rob. It's true. Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and to Burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Starcy the Game so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. It is Yuta Takahashi Day here on Versus Live, and we have had a great time running through some of his nuded fairies deck lists through the years. Unfortunately, Corey not really up to snuff in piloting those deck lists on the level oh. of our current world champion. So we're going to give you a deck you're probably a little bit more familiar with. You know, you you you, you were on the commentary crew. I'm sure you, you know, yeah. brushed up a little bit on what was going on in Standard, even though you were the limited expert. Yeah, I still did play a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, these are cards you're maybe a little bit more familiar with, as yes. opposed to the old hat like me, who remembers playing in 2008. Yes, exactly. That that Here's where I get you. Current magic. Since your computer's broken, this is your <laughs> current magic right now. So here's my time to shine. The new fairy in standard, Gold Span Dragon. It's really the same thing. It's just all of the powerful pa fairies packed into one. And it's, yeah. It's basically Miss Spine Click. You know, it's a 4 4 flyer yeah. that gives you an absurd mana boost yep, that yep. your opponent can never beat. Exactly. It's kind of like Scion, where it only costs three. Technically, you get the treasure yeah. back, you know, and yeah. It's, uh, it's a really good card. It's a good card. And, I'm going to be playing those. You know, I know. We, when we look back at this tournament, it's you know story one is going to be how incredible you know Utah's run was, mm -hmm. and I think story two is really going to be how did people forget about Goldspan Dragon? You know, yeah. yeah, it was one of the most hyped cards at going into the rotation. It saw a lot of play last mm -hmm. season, even though it was not a card printed in 2020. Yeah, uh, and uh, so managed to break through, which tells you just how powerful it is. And it, yeah, after the first week when Renan 7 was the most hyped card, we yeah. saw Goldspan Dragon's numbers die down because those tree folk were just a big problem for Goldspan Dragon players. Yeah. But then with Alrin's Epiphany, Renan 7 numbers died down and that left an opening Basically for Goldspan Dragon Basically with the is it turns deck. You know, yeah. that, that style of decks is what shut down. Everyone was playing 3-4 Fading Hopes and you could easily find ways to deal 2 damage to the Planeswalker itself. So yeah, it, it was a weird... Uh, it's a weird thing how it, how it panned out. If it would have been a week later, I bet Goldspan would have been good again. And then who knows? Maybe these Ren and Seven decks would have been better to counter them. You yeah. know, and it was it was an interesting interesting little uh, exchange. Yeah, maybe the, maybe that ends up creating the rock paper scissors dynamic that we want, where you yeah. have Ren and Seven, Goldspan Dragon, All Runs Epiphany with yeah. Mono White kind of hanging out over there. Yeah, uh, yeah. With the Monocle and Aggro decks always being. A, being around there. I mean, so. they're sneaky. They had a pretty good weekend at the SCG, the championship qualifier. Yeah. You know, I know Brittany, she went, she exiled the Swiss. Uh, I, I didn't see how the top 12 unfolded because there's a, there a lot of monogram on away. Because I just barely missed on breakers. I went 6 2 and oh, oh, it's so close to top yeah, you 12. Were like 15th. No, no, no. It was like 29th. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I lost pretty early and I didn't have any buys. But hey, I got my 10K gems. I'm rich. Oh. I'm rich. You hang your hat on those yeah. because so far you haven't had a match win today. Yeah, that's and true. If you get swept, you're gonna hear about it. That's true. That's true. Are you gonna do some envy sweeping? Out in gems? Is that huh? Is that what the envy payout's gonna be? Arena gems, SCG con and gems. Is that oh what yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what happens if you uh, yeah. if you don't quite make it. It's, it's gonna, gonna be physical right gems though with a barcode on them that you have to scan to get them onto your. What are you talking account. about? We have physical gems right there. We play for every <laughs> Tuesday and Thursday at one p.m. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, you can't scan those into arena. That's true. Those are that's antique true. gems. Antiques. They okay. Have a, they have a patina on them. They're very valuable. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Just like you, an antique. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be going first. All right, these cards make more sense. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm mulliganing, too. <laughs> hey, I haven't said I'm mulliganing. <laughs> I have one of the best cards. Um, hmm. Hmm. Maybe I could have kept my hand if Prosperous Innkeeper made, like, a Mox Emerald. Yeah. <laughs> instead of just a, a treasure. I'll keep. <laughs> we got this. It's a fine hand. It's something that can... Improve, but I'm Rob, on the play. Rob, how bad is it? It's not great. You know, in, in the Corey Keep range, uh, uh, you know, one being the worst of Corey's keeps, ten being the understandable Corey keeps. It's been where? Where is it? I've been mulliganing far too much this show, and that's what's been doing me wrong. Because the cards have always been on top. Remember that hand I mulligan where I could have turned to Bitter Blossom? It was there. Where you needed the black source yes. for the death mark. Result oriented thinking is exactly what you should do. If, uh, you know, you would have drawn your land, that means you should stop mulliganing. So, yeah. 
You heard it here first. This deck's 11-0 at the World Championship, no, no, so it's no going to give me what I need off the top. No wonder you were the limited expert instead of constructed. <laughs> uh, this is an easy keep. Okay. The only question being what I want to get rid of. Okay, okay, okay. And... Um, I am seeing, like, the two cards at the end correctly, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to make sure because I was. Oh, yeah, these? Yeah, my hand's perfect. Yep. Yeah, my hand's perfect because of I, that. I have other things to do with my Now hand. you're on board, right, Rob? <laughs> I'll make sure I hit my land drops here. I'll pass to you. I have a Den of the Boot Bear. Okay. All right. Solid draw, solid draw. I'll play Mountain. I'll pass to you. Okay. I have a Forest and a also, Ranger class. I would like to point Cut. out that a, a Mr. Todd Anderson, yeah. a person who always goes on about how much he hates control, aggro, like those kind of deck names, is apparently very mad that Ross's deck is named Teamer Treasures. I know, right? Yeah. It, it felt wrong to me as well, I have to say. Okay. It's um, actually because I'm a national treasure. I knew it. Iteration? Yeah. In the next movie, Nicolas Cage is going to steal me. I was going to say. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to put I'm this I'm in the works with hand. Disney about the movie. It, it should be coming out late 2023. Mm. All right, we'll put this one into exile, and then I'll pass to you. we got to get some of the casting right. <laughs> Just, you, know, you know, dealing with Hollywood. Yeah, oh, I know. It's a whole, whole to do. Okay. Uh, I will play a forest and okay. a reckless storm seeker. That's a good one. Target the Storm Seeker and get in for five. All right, I'll take it. Fifteen. That also means it's now day. Yep. Done. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, I don't want it to become night, which is unfortunate. Um. So I think I probably. I guess I don't have to do that now. Um. Yeah, it's night. Go ahead. Oh, baby. Nighttime. Nighttime. Hey, drop. Sure. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Good to have you back, Rob. Good to have you back. <laughs> how many cards did you draw when it went night? Uh, two, right? That's okay. how many I get every turn? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've got a tide channel pathway. Cut. And a Magda. Magda, huh? I'm going to dissipate that. Um... You know when you need right a now? clapper, so yep. you can just like clap every time it turns to night. It just does it automatically. Yes, that would be good. That's fine. Okay. Target the wolf and attack for seven. Okay. You go to eight. Yep. Pass the turn. All right. All right. I have a pathway and goldspan dragon. That is fine. I will declare attack, get a treasure. I'll take four to 16. Okay, and I will attempt to Dragon's Fire this. I will show you the negate for lethal. Is it lethal? Well, this is seven, and I will activate Ranger Class. Well, it's going to daytime, you nerd. Uh, mm, oh, then I have Red Source for the den. Okay, then I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in fact, both cards in my hand are Red Source. All right, all right, all right. That's fair. Yeah. GG. Yeah, Reckless Storm uh, Seeker is one heck of a magic card against Izzet decks. Just that that was the one hole that I saw. I was like, if, if John Emmanuel Duprod does very well, it's because of Reckless uh, Storm, Storm, Seek. Storm Seeker, because all of the removal spells outside of Utah's deck was all just burning hands and uh, you know other other things that do not kill uh, that card. Yeah, you know, everyone is prepared for mono green and mono white. They're not prepared for the old Storm Seeker. Yeah, nobody played uh, Dragon's Fire really, except yeah, Utah because uh, there aren't many gold spenders. Exactly. Yeah. Look at that meta game changing. All right, my keep uh, didn't pan out, but I figured I was going to draw spells since I had so many lands in my hand. It didn't work. Yeah, you're going to tell them what exactly what it was. It was a six lander expressive iteration. Wow. <laughs> I had faith. It did not work. It did not work. Wow. <laughs> I was wearing the I keep shirt. Did you at least have both colors of mana? <laughs> I did. I did. I had three mountains and I had four uh, <laughs> islands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and field of Ruin gets to be blue mana, so that's fine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was a little of a loose goose. I'll admit it. Certainly wasn't a tight goose. It was not. It was not. Okay, I'll be going first. 
And now the sound's gonna be perfect. Is it though? Yes, it is. I'll keep. It does things. That hardly seems fair. <laughs> it does things. Okay. Seven crads. Good luck to you. Uh, I will once again mulligan a one lander. Okay, okay. Then I will turn to Rob to see if we have a question from our lovely audience. Rob shakes his head no. Uh, <laughs> no, we just had somebody uh, daring you to keep, which he did anyway. Uh, and then Lord Vell also said, uh, so when Corey inevitably loses here, can we confidently say that Ross is the talent on the show and Corey is just a pretty face? Ooh, uh, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. mind that he said just a pretty face, implying that I, too, am a pretty face. Oh, but also talented? Yeah, I don't like that. If we can take the... Say is just the pretty face, so I think... That oh, ooh, yeah. the would then... Uh, yeah, we can't say that. No, I like that. I like that. I'll, I'll take a pretty face. Also, <laughs> Anderson is taking a guess at your uh, at the plot points of your upcoming movie, and uh, he says that you have a glow... You're going to have a glow-in-the-dark ink tattoo treasure map tramp stamp. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I will uh, get the script change on that started right away. That sounds great. That sounds great. <laughs> so w wait until the scene where me and Ben uh, Gates um, have a like a history trivia battle. Right? Okay. That's definitely happening. Yeah, it's, it's I just, believe it's it. It's going to start cold open, just an episode of Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Is your hand better? Nope. All it's right. worse. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that deck sometimes does get some really awkward draws. You know, just the team or colors. Like, the mana base is pretty good with the pathways and stuff, but I'm just not perfect. Three one -landers. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> fair. If, if my hands had two lands, I would keep them every okay, time. Okay. Fair, fair. I kept a four lander on six cards. I put a spell back. I kept four lands, two spells. Yeah. Yeah. That's because fair. Because I had Den of the Bugbear and Ranger class. I was figuring expressive iteration was going to draw me into some memory deluges, and then I was going to be set, but that did not happen last game. If you go turn three, iteration, turn four, tell you, aren't you just dead? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> you don't have the burn down the houses. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That is fair. Yeah, that was, uh, I probably should mulligan. Okay. Better? Uh, nice five cards. This is definitely keepable. It's not good. Okay. Uh, I know which cards I'm putting back, though, so... All right. At least that part was easy. Island, and I'll pass to you. Well, that was a good draw. I will play a Timber Crown Pathway and pass the turn. Okay. I will play a Pathway. And I got an egg. Pass to you. Egg. Egg. Excellent play. Can I offer you an egg in these trying times? <laughs> uh, mountain Innkeeper. Got okay. myself a Ryan over turf. Okay, okay. And you're done? Yeah. All right. Um. Hmm. What do I want to do now? I think I want to just go with a second egg. I'll pass to you. Oof. Time to do some smoldering action. You know, I had a three egg breakfast at the Waffle House before the show, right? Well, you get so some you, more. You need a third egg. <laughs> okay, okay. Wait till next turn then. Um, I will play a river glide pathway and a swing low, sweet chariot. Yep. Here comes the fun. Done. Back for one. I'll block. I tried to trick him. You almost got me. You almost had me. Um, I had you at hello, let's be honest. That's true. That's true. Okay. No. Let's go with a... Uh, hmm, interesting. Just no spells. Really weird. Not yeah. a great keep on Corey's part. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. All right, I'm going to go with an expressive iteration, and let's check out what we got here. I'm going to put this into my hand, this here, and this here, and I will pass to you. Um... Crew. Sure. Declare an attack. You may. Attack, target this cat. Sure. I'll take four. Oh, I'm weird. at 16. I didn't expect that to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, it did. Now I'm scared. Yeah, you should be. Oh, I should have gained two life off the three life since then. So yeah. I should be yep. at 23. From that, this innkeeper. That you are. Um. So what are you up to? I got some things and stuff. Okay, I'll play Forest Chariot. 
Ooh, thank you. I had negate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put these up to four. Oh, that didn't go well. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the one negate. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's go with. I'm play a land that. and foretell. Okay. And I'll pass to you. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Uh, crown, crown pathway, gold span dragon. I'll dissipate that and flip both these eggs. <laughs> May I offer you an egg in these trying times? <laughs> When your breakfast strikes back. <laughs> uh, crew chariot attack and get a cat. Okay. Uh, yeah. Journal life, go to 24. I don't think I care about that too much. Brings um, you to 12. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm at 12. Pass the turn. Okay. Think I'm dead. This epiphany. Yeah. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, mm -hmm. 20. Yeah, it's just 22. Oh, I'm at 24. You need one, one more spell next turn. All right. All right. I don't have it. Um, I will that's, gold span dragon. Coming. I don't know. I'll attack. Get a treasure. I'll go to 20. I'm going to leave these back, and then I'll pass to you. Well, that would have been better to have when I still had the gold span dragon for the yes. entire game. <laughs> you don't have the best targets here, that's for sure. Uh, crew chariot. Okay. Declare an attack. Sure. Send with everybody copy a non-attacking cat. Okay. Um, yep. I'll block the two cats, and I'm going to take five. I'm at 21. You take five. Go to seven. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll deal three to one of the Ashmouth dragons. I saw that coming. And I will deal four to the chariot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Smashing to kill two. Oh, I get to just kill you, I suppose. Well, probably not, but... No, but I have nothing left to kill you with. Yep. I'm just dead in two turns. <laughs> All right, close games, close games. Yeah. If I had been on seven there, I would have had a dragon's fire early with the gold span to deal with one of the eggs. Yeah. Uh, the, and things might have been different, but the, I definitely had to put dragon's fire back on a multi five. Yeah, that's fair. So both of these games were just decided by mulliganing mistakes. He chose to mulligan... Which was a mistake, and uh, mine was a mistake as well. <laughs> Corey chose not to mulligan. <laughs> Which was a mistake, yeah. So it was all on the mulliganing here, so... Which just goes to show you, sometimes mulligan. Some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're going to learn anything, sometimes mulligan, sometimes don't. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with our final game-ish. We might be able to play a couple here. We'll see how much time we got. But we're going to head to sideboarding, and we'll be right back uh, here on Versus Live. Oh, welcome back to Versus Live. We are sideboarding in our matchup between Teamer Treasures <laughs> and Is It Dragons. On my side of things, we want the extra counter spells. Corey talked about how impressive Reckless Storm Seeker is uh, in this matchup. You do have Dragon's Fire, so it's not as yeah. good here, but still a very nice aggressive threat. Mm -hmm. Really puts a lot of pressure on the opponent with the ability to give your follow up creatures haste as well. Yep. Um, because Reckless Storm Seeker kind of. Uh, you know, normalizes my curve a bit. Instead of trying to jump two to four every single game, I can just go two, three, four yep. uh, pretty often. I don't need as much acceleration, and Innkeeper is the, while it's the most reliable, it's the least explosive. Definitely. And I'd rather keep in my more explosive... Uh, and the life gains are relevant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the body's not very good, so... Mm -hmm. It's really just there for reliable acceleration. So if I'm not depending on the acceleration, then I don't need the low power, high reliability acceleration yep. that's in the deck. So the innkeepers get cut. We get some storm seekers and some additional counter spells. Sounds great to me. So for my end, taking out just a ton of counter spells, the one random uh, fading hope, and taking out two memory deluges. Definitely want to leave in some for longevity, so you can draw a bunch of cards at some point. But we still have the expressive iterations, which are very important as well. And then just. All the removal in the sideboard, um, you know, I could... The one thing I could think about is, like, bringing in just more Fading Hope instead of other blue cards. But I still want to have some Memory Deluge to go in a long game with you, and we're going to give that a shot. Not sure if it is the correct way to sideboard, because believe it or not, I was doing a lot of practicing with the Grixis deck. That one really caught my eye immediately, as well as the Turns deck. And we're like, ah, oh, these are two one-ofs, you know. Can't really expect uh, the <laughs> random decks to do that great. 
<laughs> we were wrong. They did, crushed it. Did you practice with the other singleton deck because it was so unique? Oh, we did play a little Azorius. Azorius. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That one didn't do so good, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one didn't do so great. But it was a fun deck and a cool idea. I think the yeah. mana just isn't there for a deck like that. Yeah, I think yeah. You, blue white rough. I bet if you curve out really well with the deck, it looks great. Yeah, but when you, whenever you stumble or play a tap land on turn three, yeah, I was watching some of the games he played, and yeah, the mana. Yeah, it didn't seem like the highest of power level compared to the rest of the format. The format is still very powerful relatively uh, to yeah. standards past, especially with only four or five sets, whatever we're at. Five, right? Five. Yeah. Yeah. So incredible. But all right. So I'm guessing you want to go first. I will indeed be going. All right. First. You're going down. You keep saying that and then it keeps not happening. Well, hey, it just happened this last game. What are you talking about? I will keep my hand. Uh, yeah, me too. This one's not bad. Forest, go. No, Jaspera. Hooray! Um, I have a... Um... Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay, I'm going to play this, untap, take three, and pass to you. Brings you to 17. Yep. I will play a Lava Glide Pathway okay. and a Ranger class. Okay. Get a Wolf and pass the turn. All right. I will... <laughs> Play a pathway and an egg. Pass to you. Oh, well, that didn't go so well. <laughs> I'll play a Magda and pass the turn. Okay. Yeah, I left up the Shatter Skull Smashing to bluff the thing so you wouldn't um, play Magda and then could have Chariot. Kind of a risky play. But it was risky in the sense that I also had it, of course. So <laughs> put some counters on these eggs and I'll pass to you. Hey, you should really mulligan a little more aggressively, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> Activate Ranger class. Block. <laughs> pass the turn. Okay. Yeah, this kept a fine two lander here on the play, and yeah, if anyone wants mulliganing advice, you know, really pay attention to my side of these things uh, over Ross's side. Just kidding, I played like trash. Um, okay, so I am going to play not room temperature trash. Expressive iteration, hot garbage. Hot garbage. Okay, over here, over here, bottom land. And, you know, I better just do this now. I'll just Dragon's Fire that now. Put these up to five. You want to pick a dragon because you have one to play? I will not pick a dragon, <laughs> no. Pass to you. <laughs> Almost got me. Got him! <laughs> <laughs> You're up. <laughs> okay. Anyone's game here. Anyone's game. Gold span coming in. 16. Fast to you. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you got me. Got <laughs> Unbeatable Reckless Storm Seeker. Okay. I guess this was a game because you can never beat this card. Can't beat it. Yeah, just... it is. I am going to take four. Um, are you? Yeah. Pump it. Put a counter on it, yeah, right? I guess. It's also day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm at 13. You're up. <laughs> Anyone's game. Anyone's game. Oh, I didn't have a... I, I assumed you would just have the two-band interaction spell the answer up. I guess you can just do it on your turn. Yeah, I didn't have it. Um, <laughs> and I'll run's Epiphany. You're dead. Um, Can't beat it in a million years. Okay. I got a decent turn here. It's literally 30 damage. <laughs> I'm going to go to 10. I'm going to uh, play Goldspan Dragon. Heated debate this. Attack for 16. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the old lethal, eh? <laughs> 
All right, all right. Bang. These dragons, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Well, I beat you so fast, at least we get a pity game in. But hey, I'm I'm happy to take one match and not completely embarrass myself. Only halfway yep. embarrass myself through the day. No clean sweep here, yeah. unfortunately. Unless I win these next two games very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions? <laughs> Take your time, Rob. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Dang it. You know, if this match ends 2-2, two -two, then that's just the unclean sweep. Yeah. It's, it's the dirty sweep. The dirty sweep? <laughs> okay, okay. That's like when I am asked to sweep outside my house when I don't want to do it. I'll just give it a good dirty sweep. Like. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. I did it, Tori. You got it. <laughs> just push the dirt around a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that, that way it all cooks evenly. That's what my Roomba's <laughs> doing at home right now, yeah. <laughs> Your room is just off smoking a cigarette on the porch. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long one. Henry's terrorizing it, I'm sure. It's like, probably. Ugh. Probably. I do run the Roomba when I leave, and I just picture, like, right when I leave, Henry just B looks <laughs> over at the Roomba and be like, we meet again. Because <laughs> like, occasionally I'll go, and, like, you just you press a button on top, and it pops up, and that's where you, like, change it. Yeah. And, like, it's just running around with the thing on top. So I just picture Henry's like, <laughs> you know? <like. laughs> oh, good times. Good times. I have a dog named Henry, in case people are wondering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this isn't like a child I leave uh, or anything. <laughs> All right. Pity game, you're on the play. Uh, good times. <laughs> the show's getting a little long. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up soon. Ooh, uh, another sketchy two-lander, eh? You know what? I'm The more and more hands I look at when I just have, like, three lands, four spells, the more I realized I really should have mulliganed my first hand. Because <laughs> yeah. these hands look good. I will keep this again. I'm in. Bring it on. Forest go. <laughs> okay. You know you're supposed to be starting with this Jaspera Sentinel Magda draw I hear so much about, I'm very right? good at turn one land where elves. I'm not good at turn one Jaspera Yeah. Sentinel. Okay. Pass to you. Ooh, we drew another land. Okay. Lair of the Hydra Ranger class. Okay. We can get a wolf, you're up. All right. May I interest you in an egg? No. <laughs> I already these told you I already had eggs. These smoldering eggs have been really good. Yeah. Well, I have Crag Crown Pathway, Dragon Spire Reveal, and Goldspan Dragon. Target. <laughs> <laughs> and attack for two. Okay, 18. You cannot interest me in an egg. <laughs> Finally. Finally. I don't like it. Finally. Um, okay. I will play this land and I'll pass to you. I will mush you for two. Mush me for two, huh? Uh, okay. I'll take it. 16. 16. Lava Glide Pathway Chariot. Sweet Chariot. Where did that all your counter spells? Yeah, you did. Uh, okay, that resolves. Can't get some kitties. Pass the turn. End step, I'm going to... Doesn't have the red to kick Cinderclasm, so that's good. That would be the tempo play. Yeah. I'm going to... Stall a little bit longer. Um... I'm going to Prismari command. I have so many options. Um, <laughs> if you want, I can help you pick. No, that's okay. I think I'm good. Um, I'm thinking two damage to yourself. Give me a treasure. No, no, no. I am going to. I'm at 16. I'm still pretty healthy. I would ask you to loot my hand away, but I, I really like it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's I definitely see, dead. Yeah, I assume that's, that's step dead. One. And I probably just want a treasure here. Do you know? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just make a treasure. Okay. Thank you. I'll untap. I will draw. No. I'm going to take three. I like that. 13. Play Goldspan Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And yeah, I'll just pass. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I will play a Timber Crown Pathway. Okay. 
and get mad at myself for playing this Lava Guy pathway on that side instead of blue. Like that. But I know I, I definitely need a double red to play this Goldspan Dragon. Yeah. I will cast it. Okay. I'd like to declare an attack. Hold. Beginning combat, I'll Cinderclasm with Kirk. Then I'll Burning Hands Goldspan. Well, that's busted. Yep. <laughs> I figured if you had like the, the four damage spells or whatever, that's fine. Well, you don't have a negate, do you? Mm, no. Okay, that's not. good. <laughs> you do get a treasure. Uh, you're up. Okay, I was hoping that would work. Because now I have gold span dragon with a treasure. I'm at 16. Fast to you. I had it last turn, but I wanted to hope to go for that play. Okay, well, um, do you have the dragon's rage? Nope. All right, All right. Get another treasure. Yeah, I'm at nine. Let's you to nine. <laughs> then I'll sack these for four green mana and play a chariot. Okay. Get some cats. And then I will play this land. Uh, let's go the red side, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, I'm for sure going to attack, get a treasure. I'll go to 12. Uh, then I'll all runs epiphany. <laughs> Here's some birdies. Untap. A draw. Um, let's express a iteration. Try to find more Allruns Epiphanies. Those aren't Allruns Epiphanies. Okay, this one into my hand. This over here. Snarl out where it belongs on the bottom of every library. <laughs> um, so now I will express a iteration again. That's interesting. If they no longer castable this turn. Yep. Well, all these cards are busted. I guess if you if you still had Fading Hope in your deck, you could bounce your own Goldspan Dragon after attacking. That's true. To cast a Piffany. Spike Filled Hazard seems like a better play on yeah. that one, but... Agreed. All right. I'm going to put Dragon's Fire in Exile. They, they, they'd both kill me, so... <laughs> yeah. Dragon's Fire in Exile, card into my hand, something on bottom. That's not good. I'm going to play this. I'm going to... Dragon's Fire, Gold Span. I'll, I'll choose get a this. Yeah, and uh, then I will attack. What are you at? I'm at twelve. You're twelve, huh? So I could attack for six and just try to kill you. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Let's do that. Get a treasure. That means I'm definitely dead. <laughs> yeah, that means Corey's got some stuff <laughs> back in the holster. <laughs> and it's your turn. I have three castable spells. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad draw. Uh oh. This Goldspan Dragon card might really catch on, y'all. This is pretty good. Um. See, I kept that unplayable hand, the first one, to, you know, even the playing field a little bit. Um. All right, I'll shut up. <laughs> That's all I had. Two red, a green, animate layer. What? Um, as a two-two. Um. Okay. No, let's animate as a four-four. That makes more sense. Okay. Declare. Uh. Oh no. Because I. Mm, I'm like one short. Right, because I need to, this as a 4-4 four, four, and to animate Ranger class to present lethal. Um, I'll just show you that. That'll probably save some time. Yeah, I was trying to figure <laughs> out a way I could... I was trying to hope you didn't have uh, two removal spells. Yeah, two and, removal, and even could, a counter spell. Yeah, and I could potentially create a blocker for the Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I might have, you know, I might have tried to just cast two removal yeah, spells but if here, I just but... go, like, you know, make a 2-2 two, two layer animate this, you know, crew here, attack, like you could just use one removal spell there. I'll use one there and then you play that and I Jwari you. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just no way yeah. I can present enough, yeah. enough threats. Yeah, that turn where you had the Cinderclasm and the Burning Hand. Yeah, was too good. Yeah. Was too good. And honestly, it was a tough decision because if you played differently, it would have backfired on me, right? If you didn't jam Goldspan, I had no answer to Goldspan anymore until I drew that Dragon's Fire there at the very end. If, if I just go to attacks yeah. and try to attack for... I mean, even, yeah. if you, even if you have to take six damage that turn and you're at three on that final turn... But I think I'm pretty priced into still Cinderclasming there and then I just keep my treasure. 
Uh, and then I just don't have that anymore. I think I still would have Cinder Claws. I don't, yeah. don't want to take six, especially with Gold Span. Yeah, it, yeah. it would have definitely made a difference. Yeah. yeah, I just figured that I didn't think about Cinder Claws and plus Burning Hands is really yeah like, specifically awful because Cinder Claws and plus um, Dragon's Rage deals with everything anyway. Yeah, it's literally that fire, specific yeah. combination, and you only have like one or two Cinder Claws. Two, yeah, and yeah. then three Burning Hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely something I if I was you know. Spending a little bit more time, being a little bit mm -hmm. more thoughtful about my plays might have been something that was worth playing around because I was in a very good spot. Yeah, I think this all ended up exactly how it should be. All the boomer decks, you won because I'm not as good as you, Tatagahashi. And when we get back to Zoomer Magic, tag me in. That's <laughs> the, I, have an, I have a working computer that can play Arena right now, so big advantage me, I think. Eh. <laughs> to be fair, you have an Arena account. That's fair, true. That's very I true. I also have an arena. Account. Yeah, he played a lot of arena events. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't remember the login credentials of it. <laughs> it exists. We'll figure it out right now so people can log in and test it for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, the the Goldspan Dragon kind of mirror seemed really swingy to me. Yeah. You know, the Goldspan is such a downhill card. Uh, that snowballs pretty pretty quickly. So yeah. just being able to be the person that lands it and starts generating those treasures because you always just have so much to do with your mana. Yeah, Ranger class, a creature lands, <laughs> or all your card advantage and flashback memory deluges and yeah, all those epiphanies. And one thing I will say is I think John Emanuel Dupra's deck was really well set up for everybody but Utah's deck. Utah yeah. had the dragon's fires to be able to deal with reckless storm seeker. That's the huge thing. Storm seekers were basically unkillable against the other is it decks or Grixis decks. Yeah. Like there was like one power word kill, but there was no re reliable way to deal with that at instant speed from a lot of the decks. You know, so um I think I think the Proz deck actually found a hole in what people were going to bring. That's why he got to the finals as well as, you know, being an Amazing player. John Emmanuel Dupra is one of the players that and impressed me the most uh, out of last year. Like, watching him play through the league weekends and stuff, it was incredible. That dude is super good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, ran into the oh, other person who found a hole in the metagame and, yeah. you know, happened to have their deck line up well, right? Yeah. You know, w whenever it's two decks that neither of you expected, it's kind of a crapshoot. But one of you usually has something the other person is not prepared for. And in this case, I think, uh, you know, they, uh, the Iza deck was prepared for the things that the Teamer deck was throwing at it for yeah. the most part. Uh, and it was almost like is this version of Iza Dragons was like the week one deck, you know, and then it was it was kind of built to beat these week one Magda, Jaspera, Sentinel decks. And then the metagame shifted in such a way that Ren and Seven was just very good against both these decks. But the Is It Turns deck coming out when it did suppress the Ren and Seven, you know, which then if you just play the week one decks, little do you know that it would just be perfect. Obviously, there was a lot more thought that came into it than just, oh, I'm going to play the week yeah. one deck because I like it. Some differences, right? Yeah. You've learned some things from there. It's sort of an updated week one strategy. Yeah. But the, the metagame cycle definitely came back, uh, came full circle. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what, what would you play? If the Invitational was this weekend for Standard, um, well, we, I think we know, we've talked about where we're at for Modern pretty much, but like after looking at all the results, what do you expect to happen when it comes to the Invitational? Um, I think the Invitational is actually going to be a bit more aggro-focused. I mm -hmm. think the, you know I would take my cues more from what's happening with the SCG Tour Online than yep. what's happening uh, you know, in other events, and those tend to be pretty aggro-heavy. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Uh, Both won by Mono Green the last yeah. two. So I would definitely be prepared for Mono Green, but I would also, I think I would play an Epiphany deck that had Celestis in it. That card was really impressive to me. <sighs> um, but also had some, like, I would just have some removal spells that deal with, with Dragon, whether it's like yeah. more Demon Bolts or uh, more, you know. Uh, you know, there's a there's a bunch of options. Yeah, but. I think Demon Bolt is pretty undervalued, especially in the Galvanic iteration decks, yeah. because just for telling that and then double Demon Bolting on turn three is awesome. And for me, I'm really torn. I think I'm going to be playing an Epiphany deck, um, but I would I would not fault people that play Mono Green because I think that deck's really good too. But I I'm really torn between a more Dragon focused one or some kind of Galvanic Iteration deck. I think Galvanic Iteration is insane, 
but I don't know if you can play that plus the eggs and stuff. Like, I don't know. That's that's what I'm going to try to figure out. I but. think I would main deck Celestis and sideboard some dragons to give myself yeah. the ability. Because I think I always want to dragon people on the play. Yeah. And don't want to dragon as often on the draw. Yeah. And uh, so that might be the way the way I go with things. And it, it is, But it is good with Celestis. Maybe you just don't yeah. play egg and you just play Celestis and your own dragons. Egg was just insane against you, though. Like, that yeah. was... It was busted against you, but I think egg against mono green when there's a lot of fight spells. Yeah, I think they, it they gets get to worse. kill it a little bit yeah, more easily. Yeah, they yeah. get they also just attack through it better. They have four exactly. power creatures, whether it's old growth troll or Briarbridge tracker or yeah. ranger class plus um, you know uh, werewolf pack leader. Mm -hmm. it's just a lot more unnatural growth can get everything out of out of range. Yeah, yeah, a lot of options for them. Yeah, either way, it's going to be a lot to uh, figure out because you know as much as the meta game gets dictated by these very big tournaments, World Championships, Pro Tours, Mythic Championships, whatever have you, um, there will be people that will adjust, you know? Yeah. That, and and I think the people that adjust are either going to get it really wrong or really right um, if they're able to, you know, find a hole in what the metagame's going to expect. I expect a lot of Mono Green. That's the deck I expect as number one yeah, for Standard. I um, because I think it's... You know, I think one thing that's going to come into play is card availability. I was just about to say that, too. I think yeah. more so than any major tournament in recent memory, card availability is going to be a big issue. And especially if the threat of banning Epiphany looms over people, maybe they're going to say, you know, it's just one tournament. Maybe I think this deck is a little bit weaker, but not by much. And I yeah. don't want to invest money buying Epiphanies if they're going to get banned on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that could really change. Uh, you know, normally... That is, people talk about that on like week one of yeah. a, a new set, and it's usually not a big deal no. because it's not that many cards. But in this case, yeah, it's buying eight or nine cards to update <laughs> your deck, but now it's every <laughs> single set yeah. in standard. We've all been hibernated. I'm not for, sure if you know? I own a standard legal magic card from a, a card from a standard legal set. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I own cards that have been reprinted. But I don't think I own this a card. This guy's got negates and dresses. Set. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some gates. I've definitely got dresses. I probably have yeah. some, um, what's the the green naturalized that can exile a card from the graveyard? Return to Nature's. Yeah. Probably yeah. got a few of those lying around somewhere. <laughs> uh, you know, um, actually, you know what? I think I have a Goldspan Dragon. Wow. I think I, I actually own a Goldspan Dragon. Wow. You're on your way, buddy. You're Jesus. on your way. Well, everyone, that, I'm you such know. A zoomer. A lot. <laughs> well, I'd never say that again. <laughs> well, this, uh, you know, this kind of chat is going to be really what we are going to try to be focusing on. We got the Invitational coming up really soon. So, you know, of course, we're going to have some fun shows uh, in the meantime before the tournament. But really, we maybe have like three, four, maybe five well, shows top. Four. We usually don't do a show that Thursday. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't expect one, but we haven't heard anything yet. Uh, yeah. We'll obviously let y'all know as we find out. Mm -hmm. But we've at least got Thursday next week and then Tuesday of the week of the leading into it. So yeah. we've got four. So, I mean, th this is going to be time where now we're going to be starting to really look into... What should we play? What should we be testing getting ready for this tournament? So expect a lot of standard and modern leading up to this. And then, believe it or not, I think even one of those shows, we might even have preview cards for Crimson Vow, which is crazy because it comes uh, out on the 17th. Preview, preview card, or previews start the weekend of SCG Con. Of SCG yeah. Con? Okay. You know they're going to have previews on Halloween weekend. Like, that's going to happen. That's fair. So, that's fair. Yeah, so we'll, we'll it'll probably, yeah, the, the following week we can just get into a strong Crimson Vow. Might have to. So we got some prep for this tournament that we're really excited about. And then new cards already. So uh, any last thoughts before we close this episode out? Uh, Yuta Takahashi is a lot better than Korea Magic. You can you can print yeah, that. Take that one to the you bank. Can, you can print that one. That one's just true, you know. And for real, congratulations to you, to Tagashi. That was it was awesome to watch, uh, and this was fun to revisit some of his older style decks. Even if it was just Ross making fun of me that I'm not as good as Yuta. nobody is. Okay. All right, we're gonna thank some subs. We're gonna thank some sponsors, and we're gonna head out of here. Well, no new subs today. But no to new all subs. All of our act our subscribers who are still subscribed. So thank you to them. Perfect. Okay, uh, thank you for that support. If you would like to support Star City Games in another way, you can support our sponsor, Cloud Thresher. It's an excellent <laughs> magic card against fairies, deals two damage to all flyers and all players. Really good when your opponent is at two life and you're at more than two life, and they tap out with their crypt cryptic command on the end step. Uh, so, yeah, why don't you just... We've probably got some in stock on the website. You can go buy those, uh, buy those today. That'll be great. And you will actually get a discount on that if you're a premium member. 
seven ninety nine a month will get you not only access to exclusive content from our wonderful staff of content creators, we'll also get you five percent off of sealed product, ten percent off of singles. That's the cloud thresher part, <laughs> and fifteen percent off of supplies. So head on over to starcitygames.com slash join a dash premium and sign up today. And if you love the <laughs> shirts that we wear every single Tuesday and Thursday, you can check out some of these Coalesce Apparel shirts by going to coalesceapparel.shop, use the gift code SCG, and that will get you ten percent off one of these awesome shirts. <laughs> oh, that was painful. <laughs> Uh, next up is uh, buying cards because Star City Games is always buying. <laughs> Easy way to update your collection, say for this upcoming SCG Con w- featuring the Invitational. Uh, and there's so many ways to do it. So you can use the buy list feature on the website. You can mail your cards into SCG and let them do the work for you. You can come into the store and do your business in a person if that's what you choose. And if your collection is big enough, you can make an appointment and have Star City Games come to you. So pick whichever works best for your situation. And do keep in mind that when trading in your cards for store credit, you will get a 30% bonus. I have to say, I'm literally using that service after we get done with this. I'm selling some cards. I got some Euros. I got some Okos in here. I'm like, get that out of here. I need to buy some new cards. So I'm literally taking advantage of that sale. It's been great. This is like the third wave of cards that I've finally started selling my sorting my stuff and realize i have like 10 of this card or i have like uros okos that are you know i'm never gonna play again i don't play legacy you know yeah. so i am doing that and i'm getting my 30 percent bonus for star credit and i'm gonna buy a bunch of standard cards later on so last order of business is our sale we have a sealed sale going on right now so you can get um some big savings on sealed product with some exceptions go to starcitygames.com slash sale to check out all the details on that get some sealed product man crack some packs you know i mean yeah start getting some yeah. you know vaccinated people together for a nice little draft yes yeah, absolutely cool stuff like that now is now is the time to start doing that that's absolutely true so check out that sale if you want and i want to thank you all for watching this week's episode or this tuesday's episode it was a lot of fun revisiting some uh nostalgic decks for sure for you to takahashi and some nostalgic for me i'll learn to play those decks a little better so i don't disappoint uh yuta anymore but we tried we tried yeah he, he's he'll get over it he's good he's yeah. good that's the summary from the weekend yeah. that's for sure so you know, all right you win worlds you get disappointed by cory by maestron versus live you're still coming out ahead yeah that's really that's really how it goes even if you win like a modern challenge you usually get disappointed by one of us playing their <laughs> decks the next day that just happens but on a bigger scale yeah, so when the check comes and you're fine Exactly. So, Absolutely. So if if you two play in the finals of an invitation, oh, it's, it's Utah, not you two. <laughs> wow, get out. Wow. <laughs> you know what? That's the end of the show. Goodbye. <laughs>